All right, let's count it down. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 12, 10, 11, 10, uh, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year! All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I never listen. I'm gonna listen. I wanna listen to the dumb tone. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I never listen. I'm gonna listen to the dumb tone. Ah, yes, Jake. Here we are again. Happy Thursday. And same to you. We're doing a video pod today, so we're kind of moving around the freeze and the paid fours. Generally, it's Monday, Thursday is free, Tuesday, Friday. Pay. Okay, so I guess we're not moving this one around. No. But we did move the Tuesday to a freebie, correct? And made Monday unfree. That's no. what we were supposed to do. <laughs> really? Because of the video. We videoed Monday. Oh. I don't care. I love this so much. I don't even I know. I can't stop grooving. I can't remember what we did. I remember yesterday was Business Wednesday. Somebody has a wah pedal. <laughs> and I think it's him. A wapo? No. You've been in the wapo? I have. Yeah. I have. So today, if you haven't noticed, is a little bit of a different vibe as... We are in a studio, but it's not our studio. Correct. It is a music studio. Music. Music. M- music. And it is the uh, music studio of the well-known band uh, Prophets and Outlaws. And they're taking a lot of my job from me today. I can play this for Prophets and Outlaws, no? <laughs> you guys don't have that, do you? <laughs> nice try. Matt? Are you a prophet or? I'm a prophet. I don't know about these other guys. Okay, is that? Well, certainly there are more than one prophet. There is. We kind of came up with the name thinking like we would be the prophets, fans would be the outlaws. We all have different personalities though, prophet days and outlaw days. And this is your abode? This is my abode. This is where we get all of our work done. We do all of our records here, a lot of rehearsals here. And uh, it's great. It's, I mean, it's everything we could ask for, for getting together and working on our craft. I Jake, would agree. Jake got here well before me, and he said, you're not going to believe this place. It's Because we've been at two really high tone places this this week. Correct. Michael very so adequately put it, it's been the week of houses. Yeah. We, we're the Clarence Thomas of podcasters. We have friends. <laughs> pubes. Yeah. Uh, yes, we do throw pubes on uh, uh, Pepsi cans. What? You don't know about that? That was what was in the way of Clarence Thomas getting that. Didn't really get in the way, but it... How does he not know about that? He probably wasn't even born yet. What's yeah, a, but... What's a can doing down there? Uh, Clarence Thomas, who makes most of your laws... No, uh, this is a Kemp spin. Write it down. Put a pube on a Pepsi can that one of his law clerks was drinking. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. Anita Hill. Anita Hill. Yeah. In fact, yeah. His pube. Yeah. Trying I don't know if that to. That makes it better or worse, but. That's like a. It was a, a courting thing, a mating ritual. Yeah. You thought that might lead to. Oh, she might like to taste or something? I don't know. And you might wonder if you're doing that, has it worked before? Are you telling me that's the first time he ever threw the pube on the, uh, the, pube on the Pepsi trick? That's certainly always your question, and I yeah. think it's valid. Um, that but means I, you should try it. <clears throat> I think uh, they're very few things that I'm grossed out by. Pubes, one of them. Mm. Is that why you shave them all off? Yeah. Matt, are you regretting this yet? You, <laughs> you demand that she shaves them all off? I'm watching Stephanie oh. and Mike laugh over there. And it's <laughs> What's your pubes itch? Can you shave them all off, please? And uh, can you get braces? And uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, We're moving on. From all right. That. You don't um, shave them at all? Me? You're a, you're a light guy. No, I do the, uh, the beard trimmer for sure. Yeah. The lawnmower 5.0? Yeah, there's still, there's it's a uh, it's like the frog hair, right? It's uh, you golf, right? 
I'm just guessing he golfs. There's like a putting green and a, a golf simulator out back. That's true. Yeah. So maybe that's not for him. Maybe he just rents it out. Yeah. Maybe. Um. Yeah, dude. This is a this is a very cool setup. So profits and outlaws have not only they've said they're going to be the music for today's show. They kind of like just took over. Like, sure. all right, fine. We welcome that. Yeah. And um, so obviously you've got the open down, and if we do go into different bits and stuff, you ready for like viewer mail and news and and all that kind of stuff? We are. You are guys that have heard of this podcast. <laughs> We've heard of the podcast. Going okay. way back, we're We've big, even we're read fans. some of the court documents. Oh, oh yeah? <laughs> that's right. Favorite part? Um, it may be what's on the pillow that you yeah. got. I mean, that's <laughs> pretty classic. It's tough to beat. Um, no, I don't. I have never researched something I've never heard of. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we just want to... Jake asked that because it's like uh, when Jake once asked LeBron, what's your favorite Godfather scene? All of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, the, the that's, whole 32 pages. At first, you kind of seemed like you were going there. Okay. Yeah. That you're, <laughs> uh, but but no, you obviously have read it. Uh, read it. Maybe read it on Reddit. It was on Reddit. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's what I heard. Yeah. That was a good bit. <laughs> was it? Um, I was pretty active. The guy, I, I think the whole scene was pretty uh, interesting to people. Very interesting. Fascinating. Yeah. And then it was a good bit when people jumped on uh, Reddit and talked about it because, like, they're kind of pro us, so that makes it a better bit. I don't think it's a good bit if you're anti us. Yeah, who can say? I mean, who is though? How would I know? No one's ever been anti us. No, they just uh, support us. Um, so you guys not only have both though you you told us you not only have all the uh, intros and outros and all that kind of stuff today. But you've also come up with an original, like a different theme song. Like we used to have in our old open, we had the Mark Rubbie open. Yeah. And then uh, that would end and then it would go into a something that was your idea. It was kind of a late night talk show typey open. And we have one of those perhaps. We do. That you want could. a late night? So this is how we start our, our show. When we, you know, play out. When we ripped off the... Your guy's intro. <laughs> oh, okay, so you this use game. this. This isn't just for us. We well, we, yeah, use it we needed sh- an intro for like our show to like start everything. Okay. And it all came from the idea of something that y'all did. Oh, wow. Okay. A derivative of sorts. Yes. Okay, just so this is trailblazers. not... Trailblazers. Trailblazers. You know us. Yeah. Ready? Swashbuckling. You're listening to The Dumb Zone. Today on The Dumb Zone. Jake with NBA Audio. Viewer Mail. A Bill Belichick profile by Don Van Natta. (laughs) And the moment you're all waiting for, here he is, folks. Blake Jones. So you say your show. What does that mean? You know, when a we perform live. In oh, front okay. Of it's not like okay. That's God, that's good. Yeah, we are a traveling music band, as Matt likes to say. A, a traveling band. A traveling a, music. A group. Traveling music group. Yeah, confusing phrase that I said once on. Do the we have radio. a tour coming up? No, we're um, we tour here. You know, we like to. We'll, we'll be gone for the weekend, maybe, but we don't tour tour. We'll just know, around any, the anywhere Parker area. Five six hours. What are you thing. doing in Vail? Uh, we have. Oh a, yeah, that's a gig. Yeah, we do travel. We have a private party in Vail. We do private parties, and occasionally they'll fly Vail. us out. All right, what's that cost? As you know, it's pretty cheap to get uh, the old dumb zone out here. <laughs> it's not pretty cheap to get profits and outlaws in Vail. Okay, yeah. What 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 does that run you? Steven Steven broke it all down. He could give you how much we pit or you know renting instruments and renting sound and flying out there and the yeah, whole. Yeah, we charge. Is it at least? Yeah. Is it ten times what we charge to be here today? Yes. Is it? Uh, what would be more than that? <laughs> yeah, he wants to keep it. A hundred times? Not a hundred times. Not a hundred times. That would be cool. But that no. would be. I incredible. think he would tell us tens of times. The old sixty-nine thousand would be great. Yeah. <laughs> what are we getting? Awesome. What are we talking? I want Providence and Outlaws at my birthday party, but in Vail. I don't know you, because I feel like you'd give me a little bit of a discount. In town or out of town? Uh, Vail. Vail, like fifteen to twenty. Okay. That's a deal. Now, do you also say? Um, much like people do in my neighborhood, 
We've had a problem, and we found a tree guy. Okay, good. So tomorrow, that's huge. While we're doing the program, uh, high atop my garage, our trees. We're gonna have six trees cut down during the show. So I hope <laughs> the noise level die. will yeah. be okay. Cut all the way down. Or yeah. Just- Oh. Removed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, stumps ground, grounded, grinded, ground, grund. Uh, stump You're fest. You're down. Fine. Stump fest. Yeah. Anyway, uh, why did I start talking about that? Uh, knows. You were asking them what they make. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember why I was saying that, though. Hmm. Uh, they're going to Vail. No, uh, I had I, I had a real I, good I, I, lead I, I, in. The I problem thought. with your neighborhood. Is oh, the problem with our neighborhood. Thing? So no, when we were getting tree estimates, you know, when you drive into my neighborhood, the it was a really old neighborhood, and you live in one. Yeah. But people will buy up the properties and then put a mansion where this old shack used to be. Yeah. Now I live in a, I would say, a medium home in our neighborhood because we do have the old shacks on my street, like you know. Uh, but then we have, like you've seen across the street from me, a builder just bought that old piece of property and there's a huge mansion going up right across the street now. So when someone drives in to give us an estimate, they are saying, hmm, they're adding money to it right away. Of course. Uh, so because it's this neighborhood, we're going to ask for this amount of money. I would guess that you guys might do that with, hey, if I'm going to Vail... <laughs> Jack That's it not, up a bit. Not like if somebody uh, in Nebraska invited us. Huh. You know, they probably couldn't. Yeah, Vail, they're not going to blink at and 20 And it's more grand. expensive to get there, so. And it's more expensive yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Sure, I'll buy that. You've been in Vail recently. Yeah, last you week. You guys want to have a little Vail talk? Sure. What's your favorite part? The well, snow? We, we haven't been yet. Snow. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay. <laughs> Did I tell you guys about the guys uh, in my na- uh, new neighborhood who are throwing the baseball around? Mm-mm. We haven't talked about this, have we? Like father son? Uh, I think they're twins. <laughs> okay. What? What if I went out there and said, "Can you teach me to throw a baseball?" How old are they? They look to be about sixteen. I think they would laugh at you. Yeah, you should roll on it. But what if I could learn to throw a baseball from sixteen-year-old twins? Yeah. Like, you kind of have Dan and Blake here. We're not bad at the whole, uh, like that. Yeah, we can throw. Yeah, you why would both make fun of me to no end? I don't think so. Yeah, we're going to make fun of you. Both of them are just out there. Every time I go get dinner, they're just out there firing into the mitt. I feel like that would harsh their buzz that they're getting, right? I don't know. They just the it whole. It could be like a special thing. Like, what like, if you were like out a, playing like catch with someone? Cuba Gooding Junior. Radio type thing. And some old man from down the street's like, "Hey, teach me how to throw, son." Maybe. No. No. That would be weird. Okay. Just like the kid at uh, Connie Rosa that just invaded into the hus- or the uh, father and son throwing the football. That no, was weird. No one likes a third person joining in. Okay. You can't well, throw a triangle. They're, they're in front of my. Oh, house. that's right. That's right. We felt bad. I know, but we felt felt bad for him because he was eleven. Jake is forty. Yeah, I'm just asking. Can I ask them to teach me to throw? I think you you you'd get mocked. Does it bother you to be called forty when you're thirty eight? No, I think it sounds kind of cool. Okay, it's not like it is with women. I think uh, a man being older is cool. Uh, there's a line though. I mean, I'm gonna die, obviously. Yeah. But once yeah. you get to be forty eight, you are quick to say I'm not 50. Yeah, I could see that. I am definitely not 50. Um, but like gray hair doesn't bother me. Stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, Jake was on The Freak yesterday. Oh, yeah? Radio station. Yeah. In Dallas. You guys can applaud. I don't oh, care. Were we supposed to applaud for that? No, uh, I'm just really mentioning. don't have to. No. Dan, they do have applause that they can play. That you're on terrestrial radio yesterday. Your dream has been realized. That's right. Without me, for the most part. Big part of it. But you couldn't resist. I had to call in because you guys were, I don't know, it seemed like you were struggling. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> seemed like you needed a little help. Needed a little lifeline. And uh, I thought it'd be fun. And indeed, it was fun. I texted groups for their hotline. So I got the uh, the freak hotline now if anybody wants it. <laughs> Fantastic. I can be bought. As the prophets and outlaws know. Um, but. That's our motto. One of our video uh, guys, Clay, I was talking to him this morning. 
in fact, because he's putting the finishing touches on a video, which we will premiere this Saturday. Mm. Not only at the Alamo Drafthouse Cinema, but on YouTube. www.youtube.com slash the at symbol, Mm -hmm. the dumb zone. Yeah. And uh, Clay said, you know what? He never plugged the YouTube stream hmm. on uh, on the freak. He had an opportunity, Jake did, to kind of build our numbers. And yeah. instead, you decided to kiss Dan's ass for 30 minutes. Okay. Well, he's my friend. You know, I'm sorry if I'm nice to a guy that I owe a lot to. Well, the message was clear. We needed subs. I don't know if he really kissed my ass, um, but I do know that somebody put together a montage of Jake on oh my God. the freak yesterday. I don't know. Let's just see if uh, if Blake's correct or not. Let's take you back to yesterday. And we're best friends. I know that sounds ridiculous, but we are very, very close. I feel like the the person to me that I trust the most when it comes to programming is Dan. Dan is the type of person you can learn a lot about how to do your job from. (laughs) So I just feel like uh, me being linked up with Dan is, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. I feel like Dan is like Jim Morrison of like ushering in a new sort of comedy to radio. He's a savant. Like I feel like he's so good at what he does that if I were to take programming instruction from anybody, it would be him. No, I love him, and I think he's uh, I think he's he's radio. Like Teflon. That's how good I think he is. No pause for that, guys? Um, That was incredible. I'm going to vape. Mom? I got to vape. I want to vape. You guys familiar with that tune? Mom, I want a vape. It's incredible. It's a good tune. Have you heard it before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I erroneously told you it wasn't, uh, it's not Joe Walsh. That must have been tough to search so Joe. It's Frank Zappa. Got it. Um, okay. Well, sorry that I am complimentary of my friends. <clears throat> sorry. That's oh, well, I'm sorry. We put together a montage for you, <laughs> you queen. Must be horrible to hear. So, let's see here. <laughs> Nobody's doing a queen anymore. <laughs> uh, just to their queen buddies. Anyway, um, what do you want to do first, Jake? We do have viewer mail. We have a variety of sports. I have NBA. a question for Jake first. Oh. oh, great. What happened this morning? What do you mean? In your automobile. Oh, yeah. I got pulled over. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, you? Yeah. I. Uh, I replaced my, I got my registration done like a month and a half ago, but I haven't put the sticker on. Jeez. It was like my deal with my daughter. So old buddy pulls me over. You got to do everything for him. Yeah. Right yeah. after I dropped a uh, girl <laughs> off at, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, at uh, gym school, as we call it. Uh-huh. I was just going to get gas, and uh, yeah, he pulled me over. It's a weird moment, too. Uh, it's kind of like with, with athletes. When you realize you're older than them, like when you see a cop, mm, cop's younger than you, yeah, that's you're like, emasculating. Oh, that's yeah. weird. Yeah, he was probably late twenties, uh huh. And he came up like but I. But now he's in. an authority figure, and he's your boss, right? Big there. time, and he has tattoos, and he's ripped. Yeah, and he, you know, he he came up to the car window, and I had the proper sticker like in my hand, and I was like, dude, I just haven't put it on. And he's like, oh. Why? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I don't know, man. I'm just lazy. Mm. And then it took like 20 minutes. And I'm like, do I have a fucking warrant or something? 
So he went, he's like, all right, hold on a second. Goes yeah. back to the car, starts. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. Maybe he just wanted to make your day a little longer. It felt like that. Have you calmed down with how you treat cops? Big time. Yeah, I was going to say. And that's really the reason that. Usually for you, it's uh, I don't answer questions. No. Just get to it. You know what it was? Uh, he asked me a question and I felt like I had a slight sympathy play. So I was like, oh, I just dropped my daughter off at a therapy for autism. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he was like, sir, oh. I'm sorry. Just put it on. He's like, I'll be right back. Okay, so not put it on right there, like get out of the car. No, but I mean, he was like, just put it on there. It's fine. You don't have to get out. No. But so why didn't did. you just take off then? Uh, he was behind me. But he also did ask me, like, where are you going? And I was like, oh, well, my daughter... What? You know. Is that a question for 9.45 in the morning? 8.45. It was weird. Like, aren't you going to work like everyone else? For sure. It was It was strange. But I did play along, which means I'm a changed man. That's great, man. Thank you. you Thank you, key, keyboard man. Do you think that, do you think that <laughs> attitude was better than your previous yeah, what attitude you, towards officers? De- definitely. What would you use you to do? You think it worked better? Um, I used to, uh, say, yeah, I, I, where are you going? So if I, they say, where are you going? Why is that your business? <laughs> you would literally say that. 100%. Jesus God. Like that will never get you out of a ticket. I no. bet cops love that. I'm positive. They like it. Keep yeah. going. <laughs> um, license and registration. They're yeah. right here. So does he, what? Yeah. How do they respond to that's not your business? So you're going 70 well. and a 55. Where are you headed this morning? I miss a sign. I'm taking my daughter to school. Now, that feels like white privilege to be able to oh, yeah. say that to a cop. Without a doubt. And okay. have them not rip you out of the car? Yeah. yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. But no you qu- knew your law. You knew the laws. Yeah. You knew your rights. Yeah. There's no law that says I have to answer this question. That's right. And you, you're high full of tea. And you're sure. like, I just want to spew some of this tea somewhere. Right. It's got to go somewhere. <laughs> Damn. But not today. I'm a changed man. See, and isn't is life better like that? Um, I feel you like went a ahead, you jawed, you pussy, tried, you got out of it. He didn't give you a ticket. No, but you know what? They actually wrote like a printed warning. I thought that was weird. Yeah. So just, you're in the system. Yeah. That's yeah. cute. Yeah. That's not the first warning you've got. But it was weird. Not the that first he, thing authority has put in his file. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. But it was weird that he was younger than me. Yeah. Like I could just see it in his face. Like he's probably late mid to late 20s i'm like dude i'm old yeah little fella it happens to uh and there were two of them too that was weird two cops yeah like one of them was at like my driver's side rear tire do you feel like this is the uh oh like he got out of the car they both did huh do you feel a little dangerous do you feel like this is like grapevine needs Big, bigger crime, like definitely. Like, is there two not, cops is there are a, dealing with me and the cat somewhere? You know. Well, yeah. now imagine him pulling you out of the car, searching your car, and say, "Well, sir, there's a uh, murder, and then there's liquid THC. So I hope there's <laughs> nothing in that in the car." <laughs> you ever been pulled over? No, no. I'm just unrelated story. That's a <laughs> hypothetical. Never happened ever. <laughs> All right. So on the plate, Jake. Sure. Dealer's choice. Jake NBA, Baseball Blake, Belichick uh, Dan. Let's just call it that. We, <laughs> is that what each, it is? We each have our three our sports uh, items we want to get into today. And then uh, off the sports page, we, of course, have viewer mail. And I think that's kind of about it besides your news. And Let's do some viewer, uh, viewer mail right okay. now. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how to lead into it, though. I mean, is there any way? I don't think it's possible. That... Oh yeah, wait a minute, Uncle Hot Mail. Hey, yeah, 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 Uncle Hot Mail. Uncle Hot Mail, look at me. Is there any mail in your box for me? Amazing. Dude. <laughs> Can we do I every could, show here? I could start with some birthdays. Okay. Which would have... Do we like a music bed? Do you guys want to do a music bed? Or? He's got you. Okay. I don't have to use any of my music beds today. This is like Fox 4. Let's see. 
got some wind signs. <laughs> My boyfriend Alex Castro listens to you religiously. He's 35 April 18th. Wait. That's, that's yeah, today. You're good. Okay. You're good. He has not so casually mentioned how you guys do birthday shout outs to me twice now. I don't really listen to the show, but I hear clips. His favorite one to brag about is when he sent you guys a gift and you gave him a shout out. So for his birthday, will you do the same thing? Uh, Allie Schmidt. Then she says, thanks for keeping him entertained when he's not listening to me. Let me tell you a little something, Allie. Even when he appears to be listening to you. No chance. He is not listening to you. No. So that's Alex Castro. Alex and Allie. Isn't that cute? Very. Yeah. I bet she thinks it is. (laughs) She's like, yeah, whatever. Uh, Fuhrer Dan, Matt and Phoenix here. Number 2020. Hashtag Team COVID. Uh, Oh, his DF number is number 2020, so he's Team COVID. All right. That makes sense. COVID. Yeah. COVID. uh, Remember? Remember 2020? 2020 is when COVID came out. Yeah, okay. When COVID dropped. (laughs) My best friend Quiggs is celebrating his Pat Tillman birthday. Mm, 47, like? What do you think? What do you guys know? His leaders are Mouth Braces Dan, (laughs) Frederick Douglas Jake, and the seldom heard Heart Attack Man. 40. There's just the right amount of Blake. Uh, let's see. That is from Matt in Phoenix. He says, also, may I jump on a Reddit idea of you guys doing a sort of a summer celebration or a camping trip? And invite some former coworkers and friends, perhaps. Just an idea. Um, Do you know I've what that's about? That. Like, Reddit's going crazy wanting you guys to do a camp out or something like that. Like a camp. Did the ticket recently announce that they're doing their camp well, out? I think... Reddit just wants you to have fun. Yeah, we want to have fun too, but yeah. what if we uh, just glommed on and went to Vail with the boys? Yeah. <laughs> Vail's a good time. Sure. Sounds like fun. To Just call them up and be like, hey, actually, there's an extra. We got to throw a, a little extra something uh, to get us there. We have people up there. Uh, we have a ton of people in Colorado. Yeah. Uh, Matt in Phoenix, uh, that's his thing, uh, his birthday Dan, Jake, and Blake in no particular order. My best friend, Alex Castro. Oh, we already got this guy, right? This guy's Good Lord. Yeah, that's from Byron. So the girlfriend beat you to it. Uh, let's see. Yesterday was my friend Adam's birthday, DF number 528. It was his Zaza Pachulia birthday. No I, idea. I, yeah, just, I can't <laughs> his leader is TC's dentist. Oh, oh a veteran. <laughs> Um, this work. is from former bad radio intern and weekend board op, Josh. Kerber? I believe so. Good dude. Uh, let's see. Oh! He made it through my filter of uh, trying to not just hire white kids. Now we have non-birthday... or uh, non-birthday. <laughs> when I was producer. Jesus. Non-birthday I tried. Non-birthday viewer mail. Does anybody have some non-birthday viewer mail before I fire into it? I have one. Okay. Is it like an ender or... Uh, I don't know if it's an ender, but uh, uh, we were talking about taxes, and you were talking about like your daughter's working and filing taxes and that sort of thing. And P1 uh, Vincent, I'll call him P1, uh, he sent me this screenshot from TurboTax where they actually ask you when you are filing, is your spouse under 16? <laughs> Whoa. Oh, my. <laughs> so... Yeah, yeah. This would lead me to believe that there are places where that's a thing. In the United States. Yeah. Or is TurboTax might be everywhere, right? Do it you, says U.S. TurboTax you, Thailand. Do Roll you, Tide. Do you get a tax break? <laughs> that's what I'm yeah, saying. Is right? Yeah, is that good or no? Uh, dependent? <laughs> yeah. Or are they just, is this just a dumb test and then they come yeah. to knock down your <laughs> door? Knock on your gotcha. door, yeah. yeah. Like Chris it's, Hansen. It's a setup. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I Indiana that was Jones also, right? What's that? Indiana Jones, right? Oh, man. Didn't he, like, marry a 14-year-old? Dan? Well, that would be a Kemp spin, right? If He married Alec McBeal. What, the character or the actor? The character. Oh. Oh, oh. the character? Oh. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about at all. Anyway. 
I mean, if he filed his taxes, he would have to check that box then. He would. <laughs> he would. Um, Let's look. Day one DF number 87 here, hoping for a clar- some clarification on the timeline. You can bounce back. I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was rough. <laughs> Clarification on the timeline of events for your Alamo Draft House 420 event. Uh, does the movie start at 420? Blah, blah, blah. What's the arrival time? No. So, Saturday at 420. Mm-hmm. So, on 420. It's uh, April 20th. Mm-hmm. At 420, we will start a live stream. And it will be at the Alamo Draft House Cinema. Our first ever live stream public event. Mm-hmm. Right? Because we've live streamed from the den before. So then we're going to do a show for about an hour-ish, like we always say. (laughs) It'll probably go long, but I'm hoping it does not go long so that we can get the movie started at least by 6 at the latest, and then can get everybody out of there uh, by 8 and, uh, you know, go home and just do some hardcore, uh, you know, doing it and stuff. That's Mm -hmm. what I'll be doing. Sure. So, uh, yeah. So, again, you can kind of show up. I think uh, doors will open around 4-ish. And then you could just show up and get in there and get yourself ready for the live stream and all that kind of stuff. That's from Cristobal. Um, also, we had another idea. Uh, people are always sending us ideas, uh, money-making ideas for sure. Oh, great. Any chance the day one subscribers could have the opportunity to purchase a brick or something similar with our name on it for any potential studio Cleveland Stadium style? Like I used to have a brick yeah. outside Jacobs Field. That's a great idea. It is. All right. Mark that down, Blake. Okay. Because I'm going to throw this thing away. Uh, hey, put the camera on that guy. He looks like Bobon if Bobon wasn't that big. <laughs> okay. Is that a compliment? I think so. Am I wrong? We need to check the size of his ears real quick. Doesn't that guy Dude, look like Bobon? There, now there is a resemblance now yeah. that you say it. I, I 100%. It well, I don't want to look at him and you, make him feel nervous. You have to squint. <laughs> but yeah. He's just like right in my line of sight. So that's what's been distracting you for the past few minutes. Yeah, kind of. A little uh, bit. Let's see here. Talk, Talk about Bobon goldfish. again for a second. Um, a John Wick movie to get to. <laughs> I think we have a uh, a female offshoot coming out soon. Do we not? Well, that sounds woke. Yeah, probably Ghostbusters. Like female Ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah. Um. Mein Fuhrer, I don't think Blake's voice sounds gay, but it does sound like he missed puberty. This might explain why he's such a little bitch. Mm. Uh, then he says, more Blake from Trevor. How to make sense of that. Yeah. Yeah, that was a quite a wild ride there. Yeah. yeah. But he likes you in the end. Uh, cool. Thanks. He likes gay voices. <laughs> and uh, dear leader. He said it wasn't gay. Please don't play that Dez NFT audio ever again. I usually really love cringeworthy audio like that, but that one makes me sad. I can't listen to it. <laughs> I think it's the first time I've ever fast-forwarded through part of the show from Michael Busher. Um, and I have trouble remembering things sometimes. I'm uh, quite old. <laughs> and so I think this was, I think he's referring to, Blake had put together a uh, different montage of uh, Jerry talking NFTs and Dez talking NFTs, right? Is that what this is? Or crypto or something? It's uh, I don't really remember what this guy's talking about, so let me uh, hit this here because uh, we won't play it again for sure. I'm here to announce that we're making an association. And what I certainly would tell you, I believe, is a huge, huge look-see into the future of how things are going to be in this country, especially in transactions, currency, in that particular area. See, how you, um, how you monetize and how you do that is, um, um, what you do is, um, <laughs> you know, I'm apologize. I, I, I apologize, I'm kind of nervous, you know. Um. Blockchain com, named after the very essence of what it is to begin with. Well, you know, it can be an NFT of anything. You know, um, like I said, um, it can be um, whatever you like. Like, for example, um, um, it can be memorabilia. You know, you can tie NFT, you can tie memorabilia to NFTs. I'm just giving you small examples of 
you know, how big this could be, you know, and, um, yeah. <laughs> am I going to buy my cryptocurrency through blockchain com? You, you better. Bet I am. And I want to encourage millions and millions of people to do the same thing. And, um, you know, yeah, I'm, you know, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of nervous. I feel like I'm put on spot, but, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Des understands the meaning of put, put on, on the spot. spot yeah, you know? no. not or, when. Hey, we've set this interview up weeks ago. Yeah, there we're, are we're twenty going to, production assistants in your home. It's called a softball interview. You're trying to plug your NFTs. They're yeah. asking you, so what are NFTs? Well, and don't then put them on the spot. You were <laughs> lost at that uh, moment. Yeah. Uh, that is today's viewer mail. So we'll give a little. I'm asking for applause. <laughs> I can tell. Hello, Parker. We're in Parker. Am I allowed to say that? I think sure. so. Okay, yeah. Um, all right, let's go now to NBA. Got to open for that? Yep. Or is this just sports in general? Oh no, this is NBA. Okay. I'm talking about that Luca magic. <laughs> yeah, he stepped back and hit that three. I'm talking about the Luca magic. That's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, so I was very wrong about the tip time for Sunday. How about that? I've been wrong a, yeah, same. a lot. Yeah. We just assumed it was in LA, so it would be at 9 o'clock. Yeah, it's going to be a 2.30 tip. That's a 12.30 Clippers tip. Okay. Do you guys remember what happened one time before Christmas, whenever the Mavericks and the Clippers played on a Sunday before 1 o'clock? Yes. And Is this the one that the Mavs – Beat them by like forty. They scored like eighty points in the first half. Okay, it was eighty six twenty six. I think so. Something like that. Yeah. Um, but then I remember us thinking that, uh, and then game seven. Yeah. Was another mid afternoon game. Yeah. And the Clippers won. So it was a real mid afternoon game. Anyways, Get we've it? got the uh, yeah. I got it. Uh, Two thirty tip Sunday. Okay, that's good. It's very good. It's very good that it's not Saturday while we're doing a, the uh, live stream event. Yeah. On www.youtube. And, um, <laughs> yeah, and we don't have to stay up till uh, 1 in the morning. That's right. So, Do we know broadcasters yet? Uh, It's ABC. It's not Jeff Van Gundy. Oh. So it's probably going to be Mike Breen. I would imagine, Okay. Right? Love him. And if I saw right, games two and three are on Bally's? Yes. And only on Bally's? Believe so. So we can't watch it? Well, I mean, I bought you a ticket. Okay. So I'll see game three in person. That's correct. But game two? Sorry, Dan. That's all right. Um, yeah, that seems weird. That kind of sucks, I right? I think, I mean, do like you mean just game for three the- and four? Game two of home. I thought games two and three of the series were on Bally's. Game two is on TNT. Uh, okay, good. Yeah. So, then so I games think three that, and four? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. That does kind of suck. It does. For much but of it, the fan you base. You know, it might be on ESPN. I don't know. I don't feel like there's any first round games that are exclusive to cable, but I could be wrong about that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. Either way, I'm super, super fired up. It's going to be so great. Mm hmm. To see the boy, like, actually get to take over. The boy, Luca? Yeah. Like, this is his time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. expectations are high. We've talked about it. I yeah. think it'll be a big disappointment if they don't advance at least one round. I would agree. But he doesn't have to go off like that anymore, right? No. Because used to hit me, he would have to score 40 for the Mavs to be in it, at least through the first two Clippers series. But now... I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have to do that. Maybe he doesn't have to get his worn down. Yeah, and there's also the fact that, uh, like I've said before, I feel like this is the freshest he's looked late in a season ever, and that is in no small part due to the fact that Kyrie carries 40% of the load. 
I don't know. I feel like we're about to see something that you've never seen from a Dallas Mavericks team before. They ISO teams in the playoffs. They can do that, and they can defend. And, and I don't. I don't even think Denver wants a piece of that. Just as far as, far as uh, the being fresh, the way you feel during a game, too. Of course. Because usually, I mean, he's the guy that would have to carry. He, you know, they have two guys that can consistently score. Yes. And Kyrie doesn't really do a lot of that in the first half. Lays back. So Luca does kind of have to carry everything during the first halves. And but now he used to have to. Well, he also has to do everything in the fourth quarter. And Kyrie's actually great at that. Yeah. And so yeah, if you were going to choose one to have to just be fifty uh, percent of, that's that's what you would do. That's the way you would set this up. For sure. Like if Kyrie wasn't a clutch player, but he is. Uh, because that's when you win your games. Yeah, I mean, again, it was great having Jalen Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie, but I would take Kyrie by himself over having both of them. Yeah. No, it is great. It's, it's very exciting. Be fun. So, yeah, so my other NBA note was uh, we, we've we talked about this a little bit over the last couple of weeks, but Jonte Porter of the <laughs> Toronto Raptors has been banned for life by Adam Silver. So is this the guy that there was weird betting? Really weird on his over-unders, and he's, like, not some real hugely well-known player. And No, he was uh, he was splitting time between Toronto and the G League, whatever their team is called. It's, like, Toronto 905 or Raptors 905 or something like that. But uh, he was betting his own unders. <laughs> and it would be – it wouldn't be, like, this uh, egregious thing, but it would be, like, he'd go out with an injury quote injury correct like four minutes into the game yeah and he'd guarantee to hit the under yeah so uh what was he making 450 okay so not like a crazy amount like the minimum of the nba yeah okay so when uh certain books saw like eighty thousand dollar prop bets come in that's what uh instigated the investigation from the nba um he was letting bookies know whenever he was going to fake an injury. He was bricking threes on purpose. And he Good got dude. Caught. He got caught. <laughs> yeah. Good dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So lifetime bet. Uh, excuse me. Lifetime ban. Pete Rose, obviously, like the the name that comes up. But Pete Rose never bet on the Reds to lose. Jonte Porter was betting on the Raptors to lose a lot. I see this on Twitter. Don't know if it's true. Three of the bets were bets that included one uh, that included one Raptors game in which Porter bet that the Raptors would lose. All three of those bets lost. Correct. So they actually won those games. Yeah. Like he, he screwed up a couple times. <laughs> he couldn't affect it enough yeah. to make them lose. Yeah. Which also makes me wonder, if this were a player of some note, do they ban him for life? Because it's very convenient that it's this guy. Yeah. To send the message to the NBA. I don't, I, don't, I don't know, but I do think the message has been sent, though. Like, that we will literally strip you from a check forever. Yeah, that seems unpre. Although, I guess they used to do it for drugs and whatnot. They did it to O.J. Mayo. O.J. Mayo? Yeah. For what? Drugs. Really? Yeah. Banned Maybe. for life? Uh, I don't know if it was banned for life or if it was like banned for three years and it's essentially like it was his prime. Okay, I know. So, uh, uh, wait, who's the guy here? I just lost his name. Roy Tarpley. Yeah. Was banned for life, but actually got reinstated. Yeah. And so the, funny enough, uh, I didn't realize that John Tay Porter was Michael Porter Jr.'s brother. Mm. Oh, is that real? Yeah. So, Michael Porter Jr. was recently, uh, he has a podcast. Who doesn't? And he had a porn star on with him named Lana Rhodes. Now, I'm going to ask the entire band to stay to themselves and not (laughs) react to that. And he started talking to her about, oh, okay, we have a. I mean, I thought we've all missed it for so long. He started talking to her about the kinks of NBA players. So she's out of the game. This is typically how this happens. Uh, they do like three months of porn, and then they're like, 
I'm an advocate now. And she's really, really smart. She's, advocate of what? Uh, for women's rights. Okay. I think she did more than three months. She might have. Blake, it sounds like you know. I'm going to leave it to you. <laughs> well, a couple years ago, she was trying to date Kevin Durant. And she has Blake Griffin's baby. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. She's been Whoa. passed around. Whoa. Jeez, bro. Whoa. That's that's what happened, a ba- so. It was a basketball analogy. I meant it yeah. as a yeah. basketball. Yeah. So she was on John. <laughs> oh, jeez. She was on John Tay Porter's brother, Michael Porter Jr.'s podcast, and uh, I wanted you to hear this. Which I've seen this with like celebrity men too that have hooked up with a lot of girls. Mm-hmm. They get so like numb to just regular sex or um, just women that they end up having like these like really intense fetishes because they can't like get off to normal things anymore like Mm -hmm. i've met guys who like being peed on who (laughs) buy cookies with poop in them (laughs) okay you know we we can we're gonna listen to the rest of this but (laughs) and they say romance is dead (laughs) certainly heard of number one um, as it were no pun intended yeah uh have not (laughs) <laughs> ever contemplated so like a cookie uh, you know I got a sweet tooth is but... baked and <laughs> there's poop in that yeah like a pot cookie but it's but it's not pot it's not pot it's okay. a poop cookie yeah, yeah. you're corn in this gross <laughs> yeah by the, the nuts with the uh by cookies almonds. with poop in them off the internet and watch girls yeah. pooping like, honestly you know, I wait a second wait a second about. back it up He's like, yeah. Let's hear what she says. Buy cookies. Go ahead. Guys who like being peed on, who buy cookies with poop in them off the internet and watch girls yeah. pooping. Like, Honestly, I know what you're talking about. Okay. I think what she said was watch guys the, pooping. The third thing is, yeah. yeah, watch girls pooping or guys. or Guys, something. yeah. And that's important. Honestly, like, I know what you're talking about because I even in the NBA, like like you talk about, and this is why I think uh, like porn is dangerous, but also hooking up with too many people and, and because you get desensitized to the to the normal thing, and this yeah. happens in the NBA. Like I hear I hear wild stories about some of these dudes, but like you said, oh trust me, I know. <laughs> other <laughs> other celebrities too that their fetishes get so crazy. You know, they might be a straight a straight man but yeah. they've done so much stuff with so many pretty girls and they have so much access to pretty girls that you know now they're over here messing with trannies or yeah. now they're over or here man. or now they're over here yeah. messing with dudes and it's like yeah uh the term tranny not exactly acceptable anymore no oh, come on let's slow down well i'm just saying like as far as the response to this like he got I'm like, hey, I feel like you're missing the poop cookie. Part. <laughs> so yeah, we're dragging him because he said tranny. <laughs> yeah, that's not the highlight. All right, yeah, let's. Uh... Yeah. So, anyways, that's what's going on with the Porter family. Wow. Jonte's band, MPJ, is uh, discussing poop cookies with Lana Rhodes. And there's today's NBA. <laughs> Do we close it? Sometime? I don't know if they have like just something ready for everything. Yeah, there you right. go. that's well, perfect. Let's slide over to uh, Baseball Blake. How do I follow poop, poop cookies? Okay. Well, we can slide over to Belichick no, no, if no. you want. Um, if you're not up for the challenge. <clears throat> and ladies and gentlemen, time for Blake. Oh, I thought you were going to play a little something. Sports ball. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I don't think y'all played this while I was gone, but uh, this made waves because it uh, – Sinner's Angel Hernandez. Mm. He's good. Very good. And I, I, I love- saw someone say the other day, like, uh, the worst part about it is, like, being pro-union. You know what? Yeah. But then you're like, oh, boy, Angel Hernandez like somehow not have a job. <laughs> he is so protected by the MLB umpires union. Oh, my God. That's like the Larry David meme, I think. In fact, I was telling Blake this morning, um, just for an unrelated thing, I was kind of booking Brunig for next week. Yeah. I feel like this will be a good one for Brunig to handle. Sure. You know? Yeah. I do love the meme going around of like 20 missed calls on your phone and they're all from Angel Hernandez. <laughs> guess, uh, guess, like, so uh, how can laugh. you be so bad that just everyone knows like that's, that is the, it's, it's the, uh, the term for, you know, for bad umpire, like. Casual fans know, yeah, who Angel Hernandez is. Like, yeah. you can barely watch baseball at all, 
and you know Angel Hernandez. Yeah. Yeah, and I st- <clears throat> I saw on Twitter that day that uh, Angel Hernandez was going to be the uh, behind the plate umpire for Rangers and Astros, and we see him so much on clips and Twitter missing calls that you don't think it's going to happen to you, but it did, and it happened to Wyatt Langford. And he's up to bat. And, and coming out of college, like he has a really good eye. I think him and Evan Carter swing at the least amount of balls or something like that, which is impressive for their age. So Hernandez is behind the plate, and it's three balls egregiously outside that he calls strike yeah. in a row. Yeah. Why it doesn't swing at any of them? He does a you know good job of just walking back to the dugout. But our good, good Fred, friend Dave Raymond <laughs> on the call, uh, he kills it. And uh, so here's Dave Raymond. I think it's Dave Valley with him, and uh, Dave is hilarious here. Whoa. First Oops. ball way outside, called a strike. Wow. Angel, come on now. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a shame right here. This pitch is well off the plate. Oh, man. A little slider. 2-1. Uh, <laughs> and, oh, my goodness. Well, heck, France could finish this game for Houston if he's going to get these calls. What in the world? My goodness. Are we trying? <laughs> Come on now. You should, that should have been ball four. 2-2. Two, two. You have oh. got to be kidding me. What in the world? We've just completely lost it here. This is just bad. So then they go on, but I don't know. I love it. I love it. Because you try to play the balance of, uh, you know, you're kind of diplomatic in your call. You don't want to be a homer. But when you see something like that, yeah, you just let it fly. I love it. Yeah, and it's great, too, now that we have the, uh, the umpire Twitter account, right? The scorecard? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the scorecard. That's brilliant. Yeah. And it just matches it all up to pitch track or well, whatever. Yeah, even on the MLB track app. Band. I mean, the live by live, here's where the pitch is, and people can just screenshot that. Yeah. And so they close out the inning pretty funny. Here. By the way, Jack White is getting rocked. Already? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, White Langford is a better man than I thought he had a fastball. <laughs> Still keeping his cool. Never even looked back at the umpire on any of those calls. Like all I can think about now. It's 8 1 Rangers, the 0 2. And that is strike three called, and you better believe it. Well, boys, better be swinging tonight. Angel's got a dinner reservation. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah, like you say, you don't think it'll happen to you. I also don't think it's not that bad. Like, because of Twitter, you're like, okay. Every one mistake will be amplified because now everybody sees it and retweets it and it's like I'm – but, yeah, that was like all in one at bat. Three pitches in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason, I guess just the Rangers carry that where you see a broadcaster, you know, maybe you know play favorites and you think, ah, that's not a big deal. But then John Smoltz, like, loves the Orioles and hates the Rangers. And I don't know, just these big things that just – that this would never happen to my team, but then – now your team is on Twitter being shared around on Awful Announcing or wherever of Angel Hernandez blowing these calls. Yeah, not to like alibi for Angel Hernandez at all, but I think it's absolutely insane that we think that the human mind can dissect that in real time. I think that basically about every single officiating job, right? Like the field hasn't gotten bigger. The court hasn't gotten bigger. You have faster players who are bigger, who either hit harder Run faster, throw harder. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense to expect like a human being to be able to stand behind the catcher and properly execute a ball and strike call. Yeah, and it's also very difficult for a human being to hit 100 mile an hour pitches or yeah, but they make like 40 times more because they're unique individuals. What I want to say though is there are hundreds of human beings trying to do that, hit the baseball. And there are some that are really good at it. They're like, they hit it 35% of the time, right? So it's like they hit 350. But there are some 
They hit it uh, 18% of the time, and those people, well, they will just not be in the game anymore. Yeah, that's true. And so if indeed there is one umpire that's the outlier, and because they kind of show those stats at the end of the year when yeah. like, this guy is missing by far the most amount of calls, so clearly there has to be somebody trying to get into the uh, majors who could actually call balls and strikes better. And I, I guess I don't know the ins and outs of the union contract because clearly baseball players are in a union, but you can still cut a baseball player. How come you can't judge an umpire's, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Um, performance? Because I yeah. agree with you. It's very difficult. The bang-bang plays, and that's kind of why I think you need replay. Especially, you know, going to first, or you're trying to watch three things, you know, the guy catch it, but and the foot down there and all that. And so, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's shocking. But uh, how about Dave Raymond? Dave Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> the great Dave Raymond. Throw up 6-4, though, Blake. Okay. Still it's in line for the win. Lighter's getting rocked. Hopefully. Well, it's not totally rocked. Only four in how many? Two innings. Oh, okay. Oh, well, geez. that's... <laughs> Okay. Let's say that's <laughs> would be a high ERA then. <laughs> How's his changeup look? Yeah. I don't know yet. Okay. I don't know it. Yeah. All right. Um, time to drain the main vein. Do we have anything for that? No. Matt, what are we doing? No, no, no. We're just, uh, we'll just go to break. Bicep and line, guys. Bicep and yeah. That's Chris Pilon. What's he about? It's like if I saw an OJ, I'd be like, Hell I yes. love Hell him. Yeah. What I, a comeback. He's lived a full life. People are like, Heisman. I've done it all. No, you haven't. Heisman. Have you? Heisman. Cut someone's head off. Dude. Decapitated his wife and, and her boy. Got away with it. Got away with Walked. it. Walked. Went back to jail. <laughs> He's the healthiest person on Twitter. <laughs> he really He's out golfing. He's How is he the most well adjusted <laughs> person? <laughs> You're listening to You're listening to The Dumb Zone Give me one of these The Dumb Zone 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 The Puppet Wow. That's right. Here we are, These the guys. home of Prophet and Outlaws, the uh, studio home, Prophets and Outlaws. Um, well, I don't know. Matt was kind of indicating he feels he's, he's the only prophet. prophet. We might yeah. be changing it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, we're wearing sweatshirts, uh, a little chilly in here, but I suppose that's for the equipment or it something. It should be warmer in here for the equipment, honestly. Uh, but no, it, but it, it, this it, gear creates a lot of heat. It can get hot so when we have got to keep on. it cool. Yes. Okay. Pretty um, uh, new house, right? Just a few years old. Uh, Still getting the hang of the AC and the HVAC. Dumb question. Quaint. I'm going to do it, though. I did it Monday. Okay. Generator? No generator. Joe. And I wanted one because of you. No generator. No generator. All that you have here. I know. Uh, you have a golf simulator. <laughs> and no generator. We have a generator in the family, and so if, 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 if things go down, we, I guess we have a place to go, but it's not here. Wow, that's really surprising. What, it is. What went, uh, how, what's the thought process there? I know the one that we have in the family, uh, there's trouble with it, and occasionally they have to replace it or fix it, and uh, it's, a, it's a big deal. How so, would you even know? Right. Because you never have to use a generator. <laughs> the only time you know if there's trouble. That's true, and that's a bad time to find out it's broken. Is if I'm at Cash Soroy's house. As I was during the big freeze. Um, you know what? So I forgot. Blake sent me this a little while ago. Okay. And I thought you'd be really interested in this. Okay. This is a piece of audio. I was just talking to you guys out there about audio of my daughters. We don't like to play a lot of audio from our family. But when we do, we think it's worthy. So this is little Brooks. No, oh, you want to play this? Playing outside? Yeah. On a trampoline, from what I understand? Yeah, I sent you the video. So, how old is Brooks? Two? Uh, two and a half. Okay. And it was a very dejected video that Blake sent me, a dejected text, where he said, you won. 
And I go, uh, what does that mean? Well, let me watch the video. Here we go. Say do perfect. You're doing dude perfect? He's yeah. jumping, jumping on the trampoline. What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, do perfect. No, you're not. I'm a jumping. <laughs> Ouch. I have more. Say do perfect. <laughs> that hurts. That really hurts. That's what he thinks of with jumping. If you're jumping around, it must be dude perfect. Yeah. and They invented. And it's all because of that dumb book you got him. The you just saw it in his bedtime room. Bedtime stories or whatever? Yeah. And First, so, what do you want to read? Oh no! Wait, no! Do no. perfect! Do perfect! No! Do perfect! You can't read "Dude Perfect." <laughs> do perfect! Do no! Do perfect! Do perfect! Do perfect! No! Why don't you let him, let him love Kobe and Cody and Kobe and Kobe and Cody? This kid might Cody make you millions, Kobe. dude. That's a great uh, leader to have. This is also transcending generations because I sat watching, you know, stereotype videos, the Dude Perfect, uh, you know, dude, comedy series. Dude, have you seen the pick basketball one? I think it's actually very funny. Pick up basketball stereotypes. I think That's the stereotypes so on yeah. um, That's so good. The stereotypes players. on softball is funny. The so stereotypes good. on restaurants are funny. When in fact, we'll we'll often reference it when Who we go to those? a restaurant. They're so good. When you go to a referent a restaurant and there's like a half an inch that you've drinking out of your water and they come over to give you more water, like they did that. Yeah, and that's and it's real funny. Super funny because everyone can relate to it. <laughs> I know. That's what's so great about it. Or like when they go to a really expensive restaurant and then it's like you just get a really small portion. Yeah, because we've all done that. Then Dude Perfect was like, well, I ordered the uh, the shrimp salad. And he's like, yeah, shrimp, one shrimp. Yeah. You didn't order the shrimps salad. <laughs> then we're both laughing and everything because it's yeah. so funny. It's really good. And then we're doing a little pound it noggin at the oh, end of the video. Love noggin. Yeah. The book is worse. It can't be. Like, it's just all of that in word form. It can't be. Uh, you know what? I'd like to see the Actually, book. Actually, it can be. I never looked at the book. It's exactly what you think it is. Do you think there's an, there should be an audio version with Cody? An audio book? <laughs> <laughs> Let's make one. <sighs> that would be a, what a comedy podcast would do. You've ruined my life. And I believe the <laughs> unique blend of comedy, or excuse me, of chemistry and conflict is what we have going here. That's what you're viewing. But also recreation. And uh, mm -hmm. listening to. Mm -hmm. Time now for football. Oh. Sports ball? I was, yeah. Sports, yeah, whatever. Sports ball. <laughs> Heck yeah. I like it a lot. Like so a lot. Jake turned me on to this this morning. He's like, hey, did you see the Belichick article? I got excited. Oh. Belichick article, I'm all in. As you know, uh, just the other day, right? Last show, I think, I did a review of that Belichick book. Correct, yeah. And I, I still can't believe that entire fat book is all before Brady. Well, I mean, he had like 25 years before that. Seven Super Bowl yeah. wins or whatever, yeah. No, 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 pre-Brady. No, it's pre-Brady leaving. Yeah, yeah. You, oh, okay, okay. You, I think you misstated it. Oh, okay. Did I? You did, but you it's said okay. before Brady. Like but it, it, it's not the before the Brady breakup. Yeah, right. there's no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. There's yeah, there's doing the Atlanta Super Bowl, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But there's not Brady leaving, and then Brady because it's you know the big thought is Belichick versus Brady. Yeah. Okay. And so but I kind of think I misunderstood. We need a couple more years. I still think there's like. 25 years of his career that has nothing to do with Tom Brady. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry if I... No, and in, in, in going back and, and remembering what you talked about in the book, I, I should have known that. Okay, yeah. No, it's it's pre-Brady leaving. I think it was right before Brady left. Yeah. Anyway, so like I said, uh, I got excited when Jake told me there's a Belichick article because you guys know I like me some Belichick, but... It's Tiger, Tyson, Belichick. Well, they're they're yeah, yeah, that's his Mount Rushmore. Yeah. That's Just, pretty much it. I don't know. Things that are really, really great. Am I weird? 
<laughs> Look at this weird guy who likes LeBron. My, uh, <laughs> As he, he pulls out his LeBron jersey. I have my Lakers jersey on today. That's right. Did MJ so. ever win a play-in tournament game? Absolutely not. Anyway. Think, think about it, Blake. <laughs> I'm excited because there's a Belichick article, and then Jake says, uh, written by Don Van Natta. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> if I've learned anything about Don Van Natta over the last few years, it's that he's not doing any kind of a puff piece just no. to tell me how great Bill Belichick is. And it's actually called, what is it called? Voted off the island. Mm-hmm. Inside Bill Belichick's failed job hunt. And so it's basically about, of course, you know, him parting ways with New England this off season. And then the many, many options that we kind of thought he had. You got your Chargers. You got the Titans. You've got, uh, I don't know. The other big one, of course, was Atlanta. I think a lot of people thought the Chargers would be a great one because they do have a young quarterback in place. And they're in a situation there where they're kind of the little brother in L.A., and that would kind of, you know, give everybody a little bit of attention towards the uh, L.A. Chargers, and uh, Bill Belichick could get that record. He's 15 wins shy, I think, of Don Shula right now, so yeah. that would take him a couple years, certainly, with a uh, established quarterback in place, you would think, and also, the Chargers have been thought of the past few years to be an underperforming roster. They've got a really good group of guys there, but... um. You know, uh, they just need need a guy like Belichick who can get the best out of a really good roster. Uh, in fact, the last couple of years, you would say, if you have a criticism about Bill Belichick, it's kind of been their drafting yeah, and the front office work. But still, as a coach, you kind of think he's second to none. So I was a little surprised, but apparently the article at least uh, says they had their eyes on Harbaugh the whole way. And there was, they were going Jim Harbaugh. The Chargers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the Cowboys were also mentioned mm-hmm. as possibility. It says here in the Don Van Natta article, on paper, the Cowboys seem to make sense. Belichick and Jerry Jones are decades-long friends. Both are in win-now mode. Nobody is better than uh, better than Belichick at converting a talented roster into a championship team. And Belichick told a friend he liked the idea of sticking it to the crafts by working for Jones. <laughs> but... Jerry Jones, for all his flash, bluster, and vows this soft season to go all in, is change averse when it comes to head coaches. He decided quickly after Dallas's blowout exit in the wild card round to let Mike McCarthy coach the final year of his contract. I don't I mean Jerry is whatever Jerry is now. So now we call him change averse. Because he stuck with Jason Garrett for a decade. Yep. And because despite a lot of uh, media yelling that Mike McCarthy is about to be out of here, he sticks with Mike McCarthy. I don't think it's so much that as I, this is my opinion. I think, I think that he still is desperate to win a Super Bowl. But if he were to hire Bill Belichick, and they did get over the hump this year and they won the Super Bowl. That would be Jerry still couldn't win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Because he can do so much, but like he didn't win those first ones. That was all Jimmy. And, you know, he did swallow his pride to hire Bill Parcells, but he's kind of got control back. And there's no question who is the bottom line in control with the Cowboys now. In his mind, at least. Yeah, McCarthy's kind of like a happy middle ground. <laughs> Between a Garrett and a, and like, a Belichick or a Jimmy uh, Johnson. Lincoln Riley. You know? Yeah. Like, he's he's right in between, I'm okay with this, however it goes. Um, I'm not going to take too much credit. And also, you don't have to take that much of a leap of faith to hire me. He's yeah. used, used to working with a strong front office in Green Bay, and he's happy to do it here. Sure. Ted McCarthy. Whereas Bill Belichick, that's another thing throughout this article is 
He does mention Jerry multiple times, though. <laughs> but no, I got more Jerry. But okay. But a lot of things throughout the article is one or the other. You know, I guess the Eagles also kicked the tires tires on it, or at least had internal discussions. That was surprising to, to me, according to Don Van Natta. Uh, just because Sirianni has had some pretty good success in his short time there. Tremendous success. I mean, they're a half away from a Super Bowl win. They were twenty six and five over a certain thirty one game stretch. It seems like he just zeroed in on the NFC East because they just mentioned the Redskins, Commanders, Giants, Eagles, and Cowboys. Well, yeah, I don't know what the Eagles tie in, but there does seem to be ties everywhere else. I think it's probably just that uh, Belichick like knows owners more than probably most head coach candidates do, and he's just friends with them. He's friends with Jeffrey Lurie. He's friends with Jerry Jones. You know, he's friends with the Maras. But I thought the the Arthur Blank thing was really interesting, that Arthur Blank basically torpedoed his Atlanta candidacy. Like, that he just called Arthur Blank, or excuse me, Robert Kraft called Arthur Blank and was just like, you don't want this guy. He's going to be difficult. Yeah, so it That's says... crazy. It says one source close to Belichick said Kraft... The guy who, look, Belichick took over the Patriots. And I guess Parcells had turned them from not so much a laughing stock, but they're just the Patriots. Right. It's just team. It's some team that, I, I don't know, they were not on the map. Right. They were not the most valuable franchise or one of them in the NFL at the time. Uh, but because of Bill Belichick, they became that. Uh, you know, and how many Super Bowls does a guy have to win before you kind of say, yeah, we kind of owe him everything. Like uh, Dirk, we're going to let him be on the roster as long as he wants to, you know, because he's Dirk. And Bill Belichick, you kind of almost think, all right, well, I'll let you keep coaching, but no. Yes. So one source says, uh, close to Belichick says, Kraft was a big part of why the Falcons passed on hiring him. Now see if we can keep all these sources straight. Hmm. Because this, uh, we're going to, we're doing a lot of Kevin Bacon game here. The source said, Kraft made clear to Blank that you'll never have a warm conversation with Belichick, echoing what Parcells told Kraft in 1996 when he wanted to bust the budget and hire Belichick. Uh, he says, Arthur Blank likes coaches who feel part of a family. It wasn't going to be that way with Bill. That seems like a weird prerequisite to hiring a coach. Like, I would think I'd want to uh, win games and <laughs> increase the value of my franchise, but, you know, that's what these, these guys own the teams. Yeah, and I think the, the value of your franchise is going to go up either way. So, a guy that makes Arthur Blank feel good, probably what he's after with his dastardly mustache is... Uh, Looks like a villain. Another cor uh, source close to Kraft said uh, that he found Bill to be extremely difficult, obstinate, and kind of stubborn, and in the end, not worthy of his trust. <laughs> also, very, very, very arrogant. Three varies. Three varies. Yeah. Which. Uh, yeah. If I any don't know. coach could count the fingers on my ring or my hand that don't have rings on them. I, f I feel like any coach that should be arrogant is Bill course. Belichick. Yeah. And expect, hey, if I'm on the open market, there's going to be a line of people waiting to hire me. Yeah. No, I think what it comes down to, uh, and this is what I found most interesting about this article, you know, we watch like Mike McDaniel and now Cliff's getting brought back into the NFL as an OC. The biggest question is just, is there a place for a guy who is a total control freak anymore? And maybe there's not. I don't know. I mean... That's kind of how college coaches still work. So mm -hmm. I would say in the NFL, in that sport in particular, you would think that like the pro players would be more open to, I'm a tyrant. Would but you say that... There aren't that many of them left, though, I was going to say, is, is Mike Shanahan a total control freak? Or Kyle Shanahan? Because they hired him, and then he hired the GM, essentially. John Lynch, yeah. I mean, he's definitely the strong, we talked about Eric Johnson yesterday, the strong GM model 
of uh, Kyle Shanahan is in charge, but I don't think he's like a dick. Whereas like Belichick is. And that worked for him for a really long time. I just don't know how many more head coaches there are going to be that are hired like that. Yeah. If it, it's if it's working, it's cute. It's You'll put up with it. I think Kraft even said that. One of Belichick's, um, again, another source, apparently close to a longtime friend of Belichick, it says, says, I don't think Bill Belichick will ever be a head coach again in the National Football League unless it's for Jerry Jones. <laughs> <laughs> the article does end with some Jerry, so we'll end with that as well, but not uh, just yet. It's a very weird quote. Like unprovoked. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if he actually is inside with Belichick, he's telling you something coming from Belichick. Yeah, and, and maybe he's uh, just reading the, you know, the whole league. Because okay, they they cite Washington, and you already said Washington, but um, the ties. I thought Washington might have made sense. Washington, of course, uh, maybe not, of course, but it is the place where Vince Lombardi ended up. He's left, from there. But Vince Lombardi left, uh, you know, the Packers and actually ended his career with Washington. Um, but, yes, Bill Belichick is from Annapolis, Maryland. And a very good point by Don Van Netta. He says, the combination of his hometown ties and football ac- uh, acumen might have helped the commanders win and land a stadium in D.C., whereas the, that's the prime spot that they're they're trying to get. Which is, many have surmised, that's the reason Jerry Jones hired Bill Parcells. Well, I mean, he actually said it. Did he really? Yeah, you guys... Has he actually said that? You don't remember? That was the uh, the Tebow audio, where somebody's playing piano in the background and Jerry's all drunk. Do that's not, not the uh, Romo was a miracle audio? That's exactly what it is. Okay, find it, if you can. Um, but... Yeah, that's... He's like, the only reason I hired Parcells... Did he? Yeah. I don't recall that. I remember the... Romo was a miracle. Are you saying Jerry was drunk in <laughs> he public? Was, he was, yeah, I think he was He was quite inebriated. And not the time whenever he was like, hey, he's with a black girl. Uh, it says here the majority owner, Josh Harris of uh, the, Red, or the uh, Washington team... One of the same leadership structure he has with the Sixers and New Jersey Devils, a strong general manager who hires a head coach over a head coach. I didn't know that this guy owned those properties as well. Yes. But it makes sense, right? All the rich people uh, own every. Okay, so here's my, when I said, let's. Gosh let's, darn it. You can't find Romo as a miracle? No. Blake, what do you got? Let's see what I can do. Oh, you're now looking. Matt can just recreate it for you. <laughs> Drink real quick. So uh, here's my source. How many sources do we have? Sources of sources. Um, in a conversation with Arthur Blank, Robert Kraft delivered a stark assessment of Belichick's character. According to a source who spoke to two other people. Mm. So the source spoke to a close craft friend and a longtime Belichick friend. That source quoted the Belichick friend as saying, Robert called Arthur to warn him to not trust Bill. And then the close craft friend backed that up. So you have one guy saying, hey, I talked to a friend of his and a friend of his, and they both said this. It doesn't seem like... Yeah, it's weird. To it's keep... A team airtight. And I'll bet that wasn't the Jerry audio. That sounded a little too lucid. Here, um, let's see what we got. What do you think, Dan? Let it roll. Romo was a miracle. It was a miracle, wasn't it? He almost never got in, and he almost got Tebow would never hit the field. What if you were the Jaguars? So they're asking him about why didn't they draft Tim Tebow. And he's like, Tebow would have never got in. <laughs> it was a miracle, wasn't it? He almost never Boy, that guy is just kind of egging him on, too. Oh, like it, it amps up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
It was a miracle, wasn't it? He almost never got in, and he almost got Tebow would never hit the field. What if you were the Jaguars on Earth? Would you just refer to this? Hotel California. Yeah. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. <laughs> Wait, play that part again? Yeah. That's what it is. It's not right. Bill Postel. Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. Give me 10 more seconds. <laughs> Give me, let me hear all that lead up. Pretty much the beginning of it. Never. Yeah. What if you were the Jaguars or... Would you just refer, just draft him to some uh, fucking uh, jersey? That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only reason I brought in Bill Postel. That's the only yeah, so the okay. The so at first he was just like, selling jerseys. He that's the only reason I bought Bill Sar- 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 Yeah, he's like, so then, that's yeah. why you bring in Tebow is to sell jerseys. And he's like, Bill wasn't worth a shit. <laughs> but I brought him in. Yeah, Hotel California. <laughs> I was just thinking Jerry has been drunk in many bars with pianos in them. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's very Bill rare. wouldn't worth a shit. <laughs> And then said he just had to get that effing stadium. I had to get that fucking stadium. <laughs> Boy, that's great. <laughs> yeah. And who is? Who are those people? They're just random people. It's not like he's talking to some famous guy. And that's why I thought, um, yeah, I just thought that maybe Washington would have gone that route as well. That makes sense, you know? Yeah. Last couple of years, chasing the record, blah, blah, blah. He's from here, hometown boy. Um, but Man, and I've been wrong a lot before when it comes to broadcast stuff, but I just don't think he's going to be that good on television. And it is going to be very interesting <sighs> to have him and Brady debut in the same year. So, like, Brady's doing the game of the week on Fox, and now Belichick is doing Monday Night Football with Peyton and Eli. And have you ever seen him in a couple of those uh, viral things, like when he's explaining – Peanut butter sandwiches? No, like Lawyer <laughs> Malloy or um, oh, dude. I mean, why Peyton Manning was so great and game I think the same thing about him. Brady, but just personality wise. Yeah, can he play with others? Yeah. Um, but what I understand is Belichick might, or at least this article alleges, he's going to sign with Peyton's company. Yeah. And does that mean he might do games kind of like that? Just uh, because I assume so. Remember him and Saban were fascinating. That was great, yeah. But, I mean, when they pop Amy Schumer on, what's Bill Belichick going to do with that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, maybe I have, mean... like, Travis Kelsey or whatever. But I isn't there a way to use him, cor- like, coach's film room? There's some way... You can't do what Peyton and Eli are doing. Right. You can't do regular... We, we can't put him in a studio with Bill Cower and... <laughs> Definitely freaking, not. Freaking uh, Terry Bradshaw or whoever. We can't, you know... He's probably not a game of the week unless he's the game of the week. Bill Belichick isn't going to sit with... Uh, the C team? Yeah. Yeah, definitely not. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, you know, he's old. There's also that. Like, they're talking about him like he's... And they're like, oh, he's 71. He still has some some time. I'm like, dude, 71? Yeah, for a president. Yeah, and like they, they in this article, Don Van Adam mentions Harbaugh, and he's like, he's still got a lot left to tread on the tires. He's 60. Right, he's only 60. Yeah. I'm like, dude, he, I don't know. They that, expect that him to do it like for a, a decade. A 90-hour-a-week job at the age of 60 is going to wear on you a little bit. Yeah. I would think. One of the Belichick friends... So this is a, you know, this is the game you got to play. Uh, said talking about Kraft and his motivation to keep Belichick from coaching. He says if Bill goes on to have success, and Tom Tom Brady has already had success, then who does Kraft have to blame? Because right now it's kind of a look. Brady left, and look, everything went to S. So it must have been all Brady. And he can at least play that game, yeah. Right. Well, we're even glomming on to that. As many have said, the documentary The Dynasty, (laughs) 
the docu docu series is on Apple TV. You know, Brady had his own documentary series uh, about the Patriots dynasty, and it was on ESPN Plus, I yeah. believe. And but they just came out with on this off season, where I think we've talked about this a little bit. Where like there's very little credit given to Belichick about the dynasty, yeah. but it is like a Kraft production. Kraft's production company put it together. Kraft is uh, interviewed in there and everything. And uh, Kraft, in fact, blames Belichick for this team's uh, one of the Super Bowl losses when he benched cornerback Malcolm Butler against the Eagles. But to me, that's also conveniently picking that because. You have other Super Bowl wins where he bent, you know, he'll bench Terry Glenn. He'll bench whatever, you know, he's, uh, was it Lawyer Malloy that he released right before the season started and he went and signed with the Bills? So that's very legendary and that, in theory, galvanized the team, you know, but, you know, that's what Bill Belichick does. If he believes something is right, he does it. And it doesn't always work. He's not 10-0 and 0 in Super Bowls. So, but that's kind of what you live with is the percentages kind of play out to where if you follow Bill Belichick, it's going to work out for you more often than not. Does anybody else think it's kind of crazy that like uh, Robert Kraft is still just on television all the time and we all know that he got whacked off like the morning of an AFC championship game and got his butt eaten? I think it's incredible. Like uh, Jim Nance doesn't bring it up. His butt eaten? I think so, right? Or was no, it a no, no. Or was it a finger? I I don't re- recall that in the story, but yeah, I know there was something butt. Drummer knows, there's but butt, I mean, there's butt stuff. Marv yeah. Albert was back doing games, like immediately after. No, it took him a year. I was gonna say it was a season, but it was like late season, and then he early went on the get... sidelines for a year. But that's I think not then the same, he just though. did Nick's radio for a year, and then he Robert came Kraft back. Robert Kraft is the owner of the most successful sports franchise of the last 20 years. Yeah, but when you're the owner, you control things. So You're right. Yeah, look no, at I, Jerry. I, I suppose you control the dude. Look at all that Jerry does, and he just still walks out there. Yeah, he's got a kid here. Okay, he's got some, a, a somehow, here. And I, and I don't got, even know how this makes sense, but somehow, having an illegitimate child seems less sultry to me than getting fingered by a hooker. <laughs> I think she was a masseuse. Jerry, um, am I wrong about but that? Jerry floods the zone, dude. There's a million things on Jerry. That's like the Robert Kraft thing you can find. Really? We well, got seven Robert Kraft stories. I mean, you've got like Spygate, Deflategate. Uh, okay, but those all can conveniently stay away from Robert Kraft. He's not a football guy. He's not yeah, involved in that. I guess that's true, but yeah. But if you had found out that Jerry did what Robert Kraft did, you would think, oh, yeah, of course he did. That fits. Yeah, he's that's <laughs> now he just wishes he could get to the championship game to get his buddy. Hey, yeah, <laughs> hey, I bet he would. Okay, uh, like a that. big a big theme here, and you've heard this with different people as well. Like the why the Falcons didn't hire him. If you hire Bill Belichick, you hire all of him. <laughs> yeah, which means you know even if Bill Belichick is sitting there saying I don't need all full control. I will work with others. I will do this, that, and that. You still have the aura of Bill Belichick. Now, they did say this was a a hiring or a not hiring by committee where they all put in their votes. What do you think the current general manager and the current personnel guy and the current president of the Falcons are going to say when you say, let's bring in Bill Belichick? Do you think they're going to be like, oh, yes, I would love someone else to like kind of do or direct, maybe even be able to get me fired? Because if you're Bill Belichick in the room, every room he's Full in, pounder. unless he's in a room with Paul Brown or yeah. I don't know who, you know, like he is going to be the smartest guy in the room yeah, or have the most skins. And you're going to have to say, I'm going to defer to Bill Belichick on this one. But, yeah, so if they're doing a vote by committee, yes, all the guys who don't want Bill Belichick to kind of take their jobs are going to vote against Bill Belichick. Yeah. Um, 
I think the Eagles were uh, very similar to that as well, as far as the reasoning. Yeah, Roseman or or whoever uh, on down the line. I mean, dude, I mean, he can tell you all day, hey, I'm just going to be the coach. I just want to be a coach. Come on. Mike Lombardi. Mike Lombardi had a good point. You know Mike Lombardi? Used to work with the Browns. Big Simmons guy, right? Musers. The, uh, form- Has he been on the Musers? He was a weekly guest and on uh, a radio station that we worked at. Was he really? Yeah. Yeah. The whole band is nodding. Okay. Well, remember once we had John Daniels in and he reminded me that he was a weekly guest on <laughs> my show. And I was like, <laughs> really? <laughs> How about that, little guy? <laughs> that must have been something for you. Did you uh, enjoy it? Yeah. What was I like? Yeah. Sure. Um. So, uh, the Eagles' thoughts, Falcons' thoughts, if you hire Belichick, he will inevitably run the team, even if he doesn't demand total control. Uh, Mike Lombardi says, you have to be all in. But where I think he's not getting a fair enough evaluation is you have to have a good way of doing... If you have a good way of doing something, he's one of the all-time best listeners. He's open to change. It just has to be smart change. And I think that's a big part of the book when it lays out different stuff. Bill Belichick wants people who think differently, who can help him think differently. And I think those are the kind of people I really respect is that, you know, in politics, you might say, oh, you're just a flip flopper. Well, in reality, though, it might be, hey, look, I'm even if I'm this age, I can learn how to do something different. Bill Belichick used to be a pound the ball, three yards in a cloud of dust. We win all games with defense. And then he was also the biggest offensive innovator of uh, his time. With uh, Tom Brady. No one threw 50 touchdowns in the season before Brady. No one had the two tight end offense. They were airing it out, man. So, I think that's a little short-sighted. Um, and then we end with the Dallas yeah. uh, tie-in. Don Van Natta knows what he's doing. Of course. Uh, what let's the see. Beak. Belichick has told confidants he thinks he'll get at least one interview next year. Dallas could be an option. If Jerry Jones moves on from Mike McCarthy, a lame duck in the final year of his contract. Belichick has a strong relationship with both Jerry and Stephen Jones, dating back years. On the other hand, Jerry Jones has been close with a lot of excellent head coaches who he has never hired. And we also know, despite the uh, the Jerry needs the credit, which I think is that's the main motivator to me of why Jerry wouldn't hire a Bill Belichick, you might also wonder, although everybody says financially they'll do anything they can, financially it's going to cost $20, 25000000 million to hire Bill Belichick. Double, yeah. Double what? What Mike McCarthy is. Uh, what I would pulling. imagine McCarthy's making, yeah. Or any other you know head coach that he could get for sure. Yeah. So even though we always say, oh, Jerry would do anything, but he just I wants to I've never believed that, actually. I've never really seen that. Yeah. I just want it for you. Well, I want it for you. I, I think be- I believe you put your good your uh, prayer abilities to work last year when you wanted Kyrie to get traded here. That was me. Okay. And it it worked. Look at us now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already exhausted by next off season. If they Cowboys? don't if they don't extend Dak, you're going to have Dak and and, Mc- and McCarthy. Yeah. yeah. And if they don't make the at least the conference championship, it's going to be bring in Belichick. Yeah, bring in Belichick. Let's get a new quarterback. Maybe it'll be fun. Look I, at him just, smiling. Look at this asshole. <laughs> He's smiling because he loves it. It's incredible. And then let, let's draft a Sh- let's draft Shador Sanders. Oh my God! And then maybe bring in Dion as the DC. Dion's not doing DC. Whatever. Although just, head coach in waiting. There you go. What's wrong with the two of you? That'd be great. No, it wouldn't. Why? I want to win games. They're not going to do that. Oh. That's not an option. You've wanted to win games for 25 years. What have you got? My favorite team simply exists as a sitcom for the two of you. That's what it is. Two of us. For all of America. For all of us. For all of us? Yeah. For all of the prophets. It's like talking to Matt. And the outlaws? Each and every outlaw. It's like talking to Matt. This is his take. You two have the same take. Yeah, it's just a comedy. It's <clears throat> it's my favorite show on TV. Season, whatever. He wants 16. all the drama, all the mess. Bring Manziel back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was pumped Dez, on that. Were you, were you looking for Dez to get to training camp? Yes. Absolutely. It's not over, is it? No. He, he can still do it. 
I know he could. He looks down. good. <laughs> you know Zeke's coming back, don't you? Well, couldn't be more excited. Yeah. <laughs> let's, get, let's get a whole band back together. <laughs> Romo OC. <laughs> Jeez. You guys want to do some news? Sure. Jake's got the news. 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 Jake's got Incoming. Endless cheddar biscuits doesn't help either. They're, they're really citing that? Yeah. I thought you were just making that up. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> it's an article in Bloomberg. <laughs> <laughs> Under the sea. <laughs> Yo, who just pulled that off? Redemption. Redemption. Don't ask me to play any more of it, though. I just pulled that out of my ass. Under the sea. <laughs> These are guys with kids. Under the sea. Not me. Life I don't is much oh, better. Oh, you don't even have any kids? You're just kind of creepy that you know that? Just a creepy dude. <laughs> should be on a list. I fan all the mermaids. I teach piano lessons, man. Okay. okay. Kids love Disney. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's a, a restaurant that has gotten a really bad rap. There, I said it. Why? People joke about it like it's a, you know, it's like a divorced dad type restaurant. What's different between Red Lobster and like Fridays or Chili's? Nothing. My wife has always hated it. Yeah, everybody she I says, know hates it. And I'm like, mm, uh, Red, yeah, it sucks. Red Lobster pretends to be upscale. Do they? Yeah. They're in bankruptcy. Well, now, but I'm with Blake a little bit, and uh, my wife has always said she doesn't like it because everything there is brown. <laughs> okay. Like, every, feels all, the, all the food, everything is brown. Yeah. Oh. You that get, means, you get your that must mean everything is fried, everything is breaded, you everything get your is shrimp. grilled shrimp. You get your puppies, baked potato. The same. Everything looks the same. You it's, get your biscuits. I get it. It's a big brown meal. Yeah. Did we sure. talk about Subway the other day? I don't know. I think I don't Subway. Remember we had John Daniels on. Uh, I think we've yo-yoed too far into thinking Subway sucks. There. I've never said Subway sucks. Yeah, you have. No, I'm I'm pro. There have been times where I've been on my way to your house, and you're like, "Why are you doing that?" You don't think every sandwich tastes the exact same, no matter what you get. I like it. You know what I don't like about Subway, and you've probably seen me do this. The pedophile. Oh. Uh, yeah, Jared. Yeah. No, he was a good guest. Um. <laughs> What I've what I've don't like is that they put the the uh, the meat oh, on the go. top. Oh my gosh! I'm so so they cut this. the top part and then they put the meat on the top. And I'll I'll reach over and go, hey, will you just put the meat on the side closest to you? And they're like, what? Yeah, yeah. Just put. You know what I want? Um, I want the toppings to be. Hold on. <laughs> Guess where I want them? You got two choices. You got the bottom. Mm-hmm. Is one of the. That's all I want. I want my tomato and my lettuce and everything on the top of the tuna. Right. Or veggie patty, which are really my orders. Because I'm a gay. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. I'm a vegetarian. That's what you want to say. I get it. Okay. That's cool. No, I just... Uh, I, mean, I'm I a vegetarian. I, I actually don't think it's that totally. bad. It's all I eat. Mm-hmm. I think what they I think what happened is they got they got caught up in the the proliferation of sandwich restaurants across America, right? Like we had like well, we had the like proliferation uh, of, of subways though. They, there's one on every corner. Yeah, for sure. But then like you know what with Jimmy saying? John's, Schlotzky's, with Schlotzky's, Jersey with Mike's. Jersey Mike's, with all of it. Quiznos. Once upon a time, oh, everyone was like, "Oh, rip. say again." I said rip. Quiznos. There's no Quiznos, right? Rip Quiznos. Yeah. Rest yeah. in power, Quiznos. Is that the one that had Muser money? <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, they had a promotion where you could get get Muser Bucks. money and spend it at Quiznos, I think. Or maybe it was the place with the olives. A man who went by the name Schlossky. Father Martin 
He is an accused burglar, allegedly posed as a priest to steal money from churches across the U.S., including here in Texas. I've always thought that would be a pretty good grift. Implicitly trusting folks. 45 years old. Um... You know, I mean, people are like, oh, you're here to help us, God, and stuff. So he rips off churches? Yeah. Catholic churches, in particular. Well, they've used their implicit trust in church leadership to do some things over the years. So. What sort of things? Uh, to go to Subway and lose lots of weight. <laughs> That is a fantastic yeah. workaround that you just pulled there. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that, too. I like it all. Did you ever feel like... You know what? I've never actually asked you this. Um, your church experience as a kid. None? No. Uh, we went to church when I was little. It must have been something my mom just thought you have to do. Right. Because... She wasn't like real stoked on it. No, but she, she was, did tell me why she, she believed whore. in God. Well, she, she was a uh, a young She's a mother, nice lady for sure. But it was a different time. It was a different time. It was free love back in the sixties. Very free. You know, that's where. Yeah. <laughs> so that uh, implies that she's not a whore. A whore would you have to pay her? Yeah, to pay. Yeah. yeah. So Simple. she was just there for anyone. Um, <laughs> Stop making it better. No, at all. It's a lot better. That's why we don't know who my dad is. I'm a mix of many different father possibilities from that week. Um, what do we say? Oh, yeah. Uh, church. Why lovely? do I know this? Isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? There you go. <laughs> I wouldn't have caught Blake to pull this one out. I, Good job, same Blake. Here. Yeah. Why do I know this? <laughs> what is this? Uh, Stevie Wonder? Good job, yeah. Dan. Isn't she beautiful? Is Stevie Wonder the blind? Wish we knew one Was. of them. Yeah. So you got some Wait, altar boys. Dead? Stevie Wonder? Yeah. No. 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 He's not For dead. real? <laughs> He's not dead. Dog. Okay, so he wasn't was blind because he didn't like get uh, get eyes, right? Stevie Damn, Wonder, Stevie 73. Wonder I'm going to be shocked if you tell me he's dead. He's not. He's okay. alive. I was wrong. Okay. All right. Have you seen the We Are the World documentary? That's a dumb question for you. Have you guys seen the We Are the World documentary? You like I've it? I've seen oh, some yeah. of it. I like where Michael just stares at yes. people as if they can't, when they can't sing. Yes. Yeah. He's like, my he's dad very upset with my uh, ass is my like whole Cindy life. Cindy or somebody like yeah. in the background? He's like, oh, God, you suck. <laughs> Do the stink eye off of that one. Yeah. <laughs> I love, that was a really good documentary. So church? Oh. You've got some altar boys in the band. Really? Yeah. Never got molested. <laughs> well, okay. Not even once. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Good I'm, for I'm you, man. really happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ever a little bit upset? Like, <laughs> why not me? I, uh, Am I that disgusting? I think that often. I think that often. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, for whatever reason, you know, child of the 80s, my mom thought I was going to get molested my entire life. <laughs> mm -hmm. She was always <laughs> warning me about men and... Catholic priests and stuff. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, that should. That's probably why you don't. Then. Yeah, yeah, I was never able to if go. If you to... got the radar up for it. Yeah, yeah. But they'd come on strong. Gross. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gross. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. I don't know about the other one. He may have gotten. Anyway, not a lot of church. But really? yeah, I did. Certainly went for a while. Went as a kid. You know, you got your questions. You're wondering. Uh, well, the only reason I bring it up in this case of this? in this case of fraud is. I feel like there was always a, Blake probably knows about this, like there was like a charismatic figure that would show up once every couple years and you're like, oh, is this guy like going to take over now or is he youth guy? And then he would just move on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the traveling pastor. Yeah. Who's here to rejuvenate yeah. the church. He's, uh, he's a mid-season addition and he's going to fire things up. And then sometimes you had to go on like a Tuesday night just to hear him. Yeah, and then he would be gone. Yeah, he'd be gone a couple months later. Yeah. And I always felt like that was definitely a traveling grifter. <laughs> like he would cozy up with some of the females in the flock. <laughs> You're like, okay, where'd you come from? Van Alstein? 
Weird. And so does do these guys charge the church for their services? You know what I think typically is the case is, at least at my church growing up, they actually were not paid. They were just like fully taken care of. Taken care of. Like so that somebody would get them a house, mm-hmm. that would be taken care of. Their utilities are taken care of. They have like some sort of a stipend. Or something like that. And like, so they're not actually paid a salary, which I imagine is tax related. If I had to guess. Yeah, knowing knowing a little bit about that world now. Yeah. All right, there's your 130 news. I, I Yeah, I said it. I said 130. So I actually wanted to talk about that We Are the World documentary. That was awesome, by the way. Yes. You guys are the best. I think the whole day has been pretty awesome, but For it sure. seems self-evident. You don't need the... I just wanted to thank our friends. I'm you don't sorry. You don't need to be told it over and over by me, do you? I feel like no. if I say it too often, then you're going to take it for granted. I have to do it like the way my father held out saying I love you <laughs> <laughs> to this very day. Um... This guy cosplaying as someone who knows his father. I thought That's, it was great. I was about to say, you heard it ever? I thought the... No, I said to this day. Okay. He, uh, he's he been holding out. All of them. Not one of the fathers have said that, that they love me. Um, my wife and I got in an argument. You guys are fighting a lot recently. Yeah, yeah. it's happening more. About it's because he's home, he's home a lot more. Home too much. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. Uh, you know, financial strains also. You wouldn't understand that, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> so hand over fist over about here. to buy this house from Matt. Yeah. <laughs> so um Okay, so first of all, the whole thing was amazing. If you guys want to jump in, if you all have seen it too. Did you say you've seen it or you're interested? No, I mean I've seen some scenes from it and I am interested for yeah, sure. It's very, very good. Um one of the things that was very interesting to me was uh like the the year that it occurred was it 1985 whatever they had to get all these big stars together in one place and they were all doing like the grammys or the uh no it was the american music awards i believe that night yeah and it wasn't uh stevie wonder it was lionel richie was hosting the american music awards not blind but made a music video with a blind person did he come on Hello? You guys have not seen the hello video. No. I don't know what you're saying. Jesus Christ. Hello? I've heard yeah, this. he's got a, the fucking blind lady with the pottery. This is one of the most famous music videos of all time. <laughs> I've heard the song. I haven't seen the video. Okay, whatever. Okay, well, why are you getting mad at, like, everybody? I just, I, I would have never thought that a group of musicians had not seen Lionel Richie's Hello video. Well, I've been supporting what, everything these guys do today, but if you want to rip them. It was just funnier to watch you get upset. <laughs> it's fair. Um, That's generally my stance, too. Yeah. So it was like, it was 1985-ish or so, and one of the awards they handed out was Best Black Song of the Year, something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like it was like ble- they had ble- that. Those were the categories. Yeah. Like you have your best song, but then what about the best black song? Yeah. For you then, people who can't yeah. really do music like we can, even though we might have stolen it from you. Oh, so you good. know. And then uh, sometime in the '90s, they decided to soften it to urban. Oh, did they really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I, I think even that is out of favor. But the argument we got in was about. So they are interviewing everybody about how uh, great it was and how emotional and what a night. Because what they did was they had to find all these artists who would be in the same place at one time. And that's never unless it's an award show. Sure. So everybody that flew in for this award show, they then, after the award show, drove over to a recording studio. And they were there until six in the morning recording We Are the World. And it's, it's really incredible the moving parts that had to uh, occur to make this even happen. Is this like a Quincy Jones type thing? Quincy Jones is a big player in there. So yes, it's uh it's 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 not Stevie Wonder. Lionel Richie 
And he basically he tried to get Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder never returned his phone call, like for two weeks, trying to help get help writing this song. So Michael Jackson basically wrote hmm. the song with him. And they put the song together. They wrote it. And Michael Jackson, obviously, you know, might have had some Jared tendencies, but obviously also he's Michael Jackson. He's a genius. So he, you know, knew everybody's part. He's putting it together. He's deciding when should Bruce Springsteen come in. Now, uh, you know, how does each part play against the other part? People had to check their egos at the door because these are all huge superstars yeah. who I might give you one line. You might just be in the background. The oddest person in the whole thing that was a part of this for some reason, if you guys, can you guys tell me who was the person that was in the background singers that you were like, what? There was one. I just remember the Bob Dylan part. Bob That's Dylan had a say. part, but Bob Dylan's not would odd make sense, to be, to was, be involved. Was there a hip hop artist or something? Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd? <laughs> Dan right. Aykroyd, actually a great singer, though. Yeah. Just seemed really weird. It is weird. He's not known as a singer. Everyone else was known as a recording star. Yeah. Star. And yeah. Dan Aykroyd, who in the mid 80s was pretty big movie star. But really, otherwise, why is he there? There was no other big movie star. Mel Gibson wasn't there. Right. It was just Dan yeah. Aykroyd. Ar Arnold wasn't there. <laughs> it looks very weird on the credits that Dan Aykroyd is there. Uh, but now at the end of it, uh, we're going home. We're uh, just talking about how great everything was. And one of the guys you're going to hear from is a uh, crew member, like a cameraman that they called in. Okay. When it was over, we were exhilarated and exhausted, to be sure. It had been up all night. But even then, on the evening, you knew that we'd done something that was going to live forever. You killed it. And we, and we made it through. Is, is it okay? Trying to get 40 superstars together in the same place at the same time is impossible, really. That's why all of a sudden Springsteen said, right after my show, I'm coming to California. Paul Simon, I'm on my way. Billy Joel, I'm on my way. Bob Dylan. <laughs> Here we go. In this room. We're getting up to the guy. This family grew. Woo! I assumed this was a paying gig. So at the end of the night, when I'm getting ready to home, I'd, I'd kind of like made up an invoice. And they go, invoice? There's no invoice. This is all volunteer. Everybody here is volunteer. I went, all right. Well, I got this cool T-shirt and a great story. So, okay. So he was just a cameraman they called in. And I said to my wife, that really sucks for that guy. Yeah. And she's like, what? He got to be a part of the, we are the world and blah, 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 Making blah, blah. Making history. Like, yeah, okay. All the other guys, though. Make 15 million a year. Yeah. Make millions. They clearly know, hey, I will get the Goodwill pub for this because mm -hmm. you're going to look at this record and say it's for Africa and we're feeding kids, they're dying. And okay, now Bruce Springsteen. Oh, gosh, he gave his time. I might like Bruce Springsteen a little more now. They're, 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 there's not, you don't just do this. This wasn't done anonymously. They all knew. This is not going to hurt my career, you know, to be a part of this. Cameraman, until this day that this documentary came out, was just a guy that had his, now he had a cool experience, but he ain't uh, making any points off of it. How, yeah, how I, much was this cool experience check? When yeah, he, he to went, to the, went to the mailbox. I mean, for, for me, my... for me, basically, I just, I and cannot he, off the top of my head conceive of the idea of having someone run video for you for no money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to pop in here, bud? <laughs> I would think the pro the difference between uh, Michael I mean, Copeland. That, that would just be, that would be, uh, yeah. I, the difference between, do we have a copelandproductions.com that we can put <laughs> yeah, over me yeah. now when I talk about it? Here, do this thing. Un do Michael this Copeland. Number. Unethical at yeah. best. Copelandproductions.com. <laughs> Michael Copeland. <laughs> New ahead of time. There's no after the whole show is over. Oh, by the way, Michael Copeland from CopelandProductions.com. You're uh, remember how much he loved Bono? Yeah, he was uh, he, so for Bono. He was uh, you would not oh, say he was anti Bono, right? And yeah, I mean this I, guy I, was not. If you were told before, I bet he would have still accepted it. Probably. But, but it was a bit point, of a surprise. My yeah. point was to not have this grinding all nighter. You didn't know you'd be there that late. I thought I'd be home earlier, and. Uh, you know, and my wife uh, argued with me about it. 
But then the makeup sex was so dynamite, so fast. It was like twenty, so fast. 20 to thirty Nobody seconds. Nobody ever says so fast. That's, I mean, Which yeah, makes it great for me. Yeah, for sure. Um, do we intro today in history in some way, or do I just uh, go ahead and hit my thing? Or are we just playing it throughout? What are we doing here? Whatever you want. I don't know what I want. I just know it's uh, Thursday, April 18th. I can confirm that. On this day in 1775, it was the first confirmed occurrence of a thing that sounds dirty but probably wasn't intended to be. When Paul Revere began his famous ride from Charlestown (laughs) to Lexington, he was yelling out for all children to hear. What was he saying? Some lady named the British are coming. The yeah. British are coming. Think of the children. On this day in 1934, the first laundromat... I wish I would have been alive back then. 1775? Yeah. You Why? don't feel you're too soft for that era? I just don't think a British person could ever mess with me. Ever. They had muskets. Yeah, but they were like lining up in rows. I know. I feel like you give me and Blake a night to plan, and we could take out most of Yeah, I, I just don't think you're, you're conquering me. Yeah, I just don't think there's any way. They're British. You seem like a uh, guy that would have thrown some tea into the harbor. Back 100%. then, man, they ran the world, though. Because nobody had stood up yet. Nobody had stood on business. <laughs> <laughs> on this day in 1934, the first laundromat opened in Fort Worth, Texas. Oh. Sp- spell it backwards. You like that bit? No. What? You just see like a you'll see like a laundry place to just they oh, invert yeah, the yeah. letters for oh. no reason at all. What is the point of that? I think it's just to catch your attention, probably. Yeah. I would imagine. Let's do that with our logo. Boy, I haven't been to a laundromat in a long time. I have pretty recently. I go to the one over by your house. Yeah, yeah, because you had a uh, tray broke our <laughs> washing machine. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You want our logo to be inverted? Nah, probably not. Okay. These guys are just jamming. I just say lots of it. stuff, Blake. On this day in 1966, Bill Russell, named player coach at the Boston Celtics, becoming the NBA's first black coach. And you think, then, you think LeBron will ever do it, or is he straight to ownership? He'll never coach. Coach, Player coach? No. What if he could bring it back? What if he could coach Bronny? <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're reeling him back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Would you uh, get rid of kid for LeBron? 100%. Tomorrow? Without yeah. a doubt. Sight unseen. On this day in 1783, General Washington, George Washington, yeah, issued the general order announcing the end of hostilities with Britain. Gave thanks to the Almighty, offered congratulations, and then... Because he was a benevolent, benevolent, he was a very good leader. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he authorized an extra rationing of alcohol for the troops to celebrate. Look at that. What a guy. You earned it, boys. Hip, hip. All right. Hooray. Hooray. They're Do you awkward. wish you lived in an era where you could just yell hip, hip, and everybody and else just, just like, hey, jump wait, on did board? I just hear a hip, hip? <laughs> like you're just on Down edge. Down the street, yeah. You're waiting for uh, someone to do that, please, yeah. please yeah. yell hip hip. And then you're a kid, and you're like, I can't wait till I'm old enough to yell hip hip. <laughs> Hooray! Like yes. when I was at a game as a kid, and I can't wait till I'm old enough to start the wave, man. I can't believe you guys haven't <laughs> seen this Lionel Richie video. That guy is the coolest guy. The guy up in front of our section who's starting the wave. Yeah. Once I get older, is that a, is that a barrel he's wearing? Oh my gosh! What a cool guy. Um. Birthdays today. Okay. Besides dirty listeners, uh, former cowboy Kenny Gant is 57. <sighs> Dude, this guy knows. Yeah. Shark up. Did you have a little hat? Um, I don't think I had the hat, but they definitely banned the celebration from my youth football league. <laughs> have we had him on? No. I thought we did. But it was definitely, I mean, Get Kenny Gant. Everybody would do it. They banned that and they banned the, the Dion. The Dion 
uh, bandana. You couldn't wear the do rags. Yeah, because I would wear a do rag under my helmet. I was of course like you would. Eight. Um, former cowboy Sam Pulescu is forty. <laughs> There's a couple of notes for him. Yeah, there are. Do you have the audio of that? Uh, I can like probably clean, find it pretty no quickly. Beeped. Ooh, that's a good question. That's where um, Brad Sham dropped a C-bomb on one of the punts of Sam Pulescu. You could have given me a little bit of a heads up here, Chief. Well, I can tell the other Sam Pulescu uh, note that I have is that he looks exactly like... Do you remember? Uh, I don't. Does anybody remember my wacky bit here? He looks exactly like... So in the movie... Um, that looks like a beep. You know, you can see like the waveform. Yeah. yeah. He, in the movie Boogie Nights, when Mark Wahlberg has fallen on tough times near the end and people are paying to watch him uh, pleasure himself. Yeah. So a guy pulls up, pays Mark Wahlberg to pleasure himself, but then beats him up because mm-hmm. he's really just... Wanting to beat up uh, gay people or whatever. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, that guy looks exactly like Sam Pulescu. <laughs> okay. Like, look at them both. Seriously. Okay. Yeah, I will. Seriously? Yeah, this... Do you Everybody thinks to, I'm kidding. Do you even want to hear it beeped? Yeah. Pull me up. Pulescu's kick. Oh, this is a good kick by the rookie free agent from Oregon. Back to Kirkus at the 23, up quickly to the 30, left across the 35 to the 40. Really good return. A 56-yard uh, 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 punt by Pulescu. <laughs> yeah. I think the stammer and all that is still makes it worth it. Amazing. Tressway is 34, speaking of punters. And a former, what college did Tressway go to? How do you not know? Wish we knew. Longhorn? He was a Sooner. Mm. Oh. I'm looking at Sooners over here. Yeah. Well, that's our bad. <laughs> Boyan Bogdanovich is 35. How many Boyans did you... Th- I don't know. Well, there's um, Boyan and Bogdan. I know, but how many Boyans do you know? Not many. Uh, Miguel Cabrera is 41. Biggie. Alia Shawcat is 35. Don't know it. She is maybe from Arrested Development. Oh, 11. Uh, let's see. You never did Arrested Development? <laughs> How much could one banana cost? <laughs> no, I did. Anyang. It's a banana, Michael. <laughs> is there money in it? Conan O'Brien is 61. Glow up. He looks good, I think, for a 61-year-old. He looks fantastic. Uh, Courtney Kardashian, 45. Is that the one you like? No. You like Chloe. I do. The fat one. Oh, I OJ's do. daughter. Yeah. Chloe is OJ's yes. daughter. Yeah. yeah. That's... Although he did deny that. Well, we'll never know. And she did say she had sex with him, which makes it weird. She didn't have sex with him. That's what she said. No, Chloe didn't. Yeah. She, the, the mom. The did. mom. It was a joke, but I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> or maybe What's not. What's the punchline? She said it. I mean, she said it. It was like an interview. <laughs> See, OJ denied it, but has OJ ever denied anything else? He's <laughs> no, I think he's got he's a pretty clean record. About yeah, everything. for sure. Um, some spares from TV shows. Jane Leaves, 63. Jane Leaves? Daphne Moon in Frasier. Why do I always think you were stoked on Frasier? I don't know. Um, I do have that thought that you it, once it told me you liked Frasier. I can't stand that show. Doesn't make any sense at all. You look like a Frasier guy. That's For some <laughs> reason, like you love Bulldog, or uh, there's a guy on there called Bulldog. What? El- Eric McCormick is 61. That is literally like the meanest thing anybody's <laughs> ever said to me. I just thought you were stoked on Frasier, and every time I see a Frasier thing, it's kind of like, yeah. I think you're about to vote for the uh, Davy O'Brien or the whatever. You didn't think or- Daphne was hot? Remember a couple I mean, months ago? I just didn't. I, again, back to the British thing. Not a fan. Okay. Okay. Remember a couple months ago you were trying to sell us on the Frasier reboot? Do the next birthday. Were you? No, I wasn't. (laughs) It was a fake video. God bless it. Not in front of the prophets and the outlaws. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Melissa Joan Hart, 48, says here. Now that 
Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yes, Witch. that is me. Is you she mean, hot? You mean Clarissa? <laughs> uh, explain it all to me. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah back in the day, she Woo! was... Melissa Joan Hart, huh? Top Ooh, notch. Hoo, hoo. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. I have to Let wait. me see if I can confirm that. See if Dan can Google a boner. <laughs> let's see. Like, why... How about <laughs> yes and? Remember yes and? I remember yes and. I'm Not sorry. all this BS. <laughs> I'm sorry. This oh man. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Where was I? Approved. Oh, Rick Moranis is 71. Always gave me the just the strangest creepy vibe. Didn't like those movies as a kid. Oh, really? Nah. Well, my kids loved them. They were always on. Yeah, everyone did seem to love them, but I, uh, I don't know, man. Were you ever amused that his name, last name is More Anus? Of course. Isn't that kind of funny? <laughs> yes. Do you know America Ferreira is 40? I don't. She is Ugly Betty, which was a program. Born on the stain now dead, Clarence Darrow, the defense attorney at the Scopes Monkey Trials, mm. or trial. <laughs> Probably just one trial. It'd be funny if they actually put the monkeys up there. <laughs> yeah. Are you telling me that we were once an ape? He's like, sir, I plead the fifth. Died on this day, still dead. We have uh, Albert Einstein. And on this day in 2012, Mm. this will explain the open to the show. Dick Clark. Oh, Oh, wow. Tony. And that is today in history. history. I want to keep going. We've got applause. Look at that. I think keeping going would be great. I wish I had more stuff. I'm out of material. <laughs> yeah. That's the, uh, <laughs> the main problem. Yeah. Um, do we do closing remarks yeah. or do we want to uh, closing uh, tunes? or well, what's, you what's your bit here, boys? You were telling us maybe Poop cookies? Your, your daughters might critique our song. That might be cool. Yeah. I'd be up for that. That's kind um, of a bit idea I had that I wanted to run it by these guys. Should I tell them the origin of it? Yeah, please tell them. Because I got... It's a good idea. We have an email from someone who wanted to debut their song on our show. Okay. Like next week. And they were going to pay us to do so. So at Sounds first... Great. At first, we obviously, when someone says, I will pay you too, you start nodding. Right. Yes, yes. But then I was, I think I'm an artist. Mm-hmm. And Pure. And the, you know, to mess with the fabric of the show, though... For us to sit there and play a three-minute song and, like, listen to it. And then, what if we don't like it? What if we do? I don't know. It, it, that seems disingenuous. That doesn't seem like who we are. That we would be like, oh, yes, I, th- I think, you know, and I don't know anything about music anyway. I'm listening to Andy Gibb, for God's sake. So, What's wrong with that? I, nothing. I find nothing, <laughs> nothing wrong with Andy nothing. Gibb. Um, but it's not like we're, uh, you know, that's not our established thing. critics. Yeah. And if people are listening, they're like, this isn't your thing. You've uh, clearly, but so the idea is for six ninety, we will, <laughs> if, if they would let us, we will, uh, debut your song, but the song will be reviewed by the roast twins. Holy shit. So my daughters <laughs> will. They're just going to have it. They sit and listen to it, and you know what's going to happen. Yeah. So you know going in. Now, if you're listening, now you're also entertained, uh, theoretically. Mm -hmm. I don't want to guarantee that. That's the idea, though. But you, you know, you're that that's funny, and they're they're essing all over it, and then you still get some pub out of it, and people know your song exists, and they'll be able to go to uh, you know Spotify and get the song, download it, and all that kind of stuff. Sure. And I would kind of think our audience, too, like I was saying to you, um, the man great and Norm MacDonald, some of the great all time, you listen to some other podcasts, you say, we'll just S all of their sponsors. Yeah. And you're more likely to support that sponsor. Way more. Because you kind of know they've got, they get it. They're, yeah, yeah, they're cool. They got the sense of humor. It doesn't matter. You can joke about something. It doesn't really mean that you mean that. So if indeed, I, I would think that'd be good for all, if indeed people would want to do that. And you've even volunteered, you would do that. 
for maybe the next song you guys come pour, up with. Pour our hearts out and then let yeah, Dan's daughters just, <laughs> just shit place. all over yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> In real time. A goo goo gaga. Because there's no way... Yeah, Even it's if not, it's I mean, the it's greatest just, song in the world, if I not. say, hey, this is uh, some of our listeners put this together, uh, what do you think? First of all, they're going to kill us. Yeah. They're going to destroy us for doing this stupid thing. That How many people even heard this? <laughs> yeah. Well, he you know, just what? keeps saying hello. And what's this blind lady with pottery? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good video, but <laughs> cool if she could see. <laughs> All right, so that's coming to a theater near you. That's kind of like the whole 690 thing started organically anyway, so maybe yeah. that'll start. Uh, anyway, sorry, closing remarks. I stepped all over your closing remarks. This isn't my show. <laughs> this is the uh, the Prophets and Outlaws show. Well, we're huge fans, guys. Thank you for coming. Uh, Thank we, you for having we, us. We followed the whole journey. Um, we, most of us have been listening since we were at high school. in high school. We knew groups. Groobs. We know Groobs, and um, so we just love you guys. Did you know Gro- the Groobs house that Dirk bought? Yeah, I know of it. Yeah, okay. In the race car bed, I went to school yeah. with him. <laughs> you went to school with Groobs? Yeah, I was in his grade. Oh, okay. Yeah, and Good yeah, word. we were talking. He's one of the bravest guys I know. He would play catch with our star pitcher. Um, he had to put on full catcher's gear just to play warm up catch with Michael Knox, who would throw the ball ninety five miles an hour at I, his face. I saw him throw it from home plate over. Uh, center field and then Groobs would play catch with that guy and I had immense respect for him he could throw from home plate over the fence yeah. wow I mean he was unbelievable and, and Groobs would play catch with him and I'd... maybe now he was could Groobs... teach me to throw yeah was Groobs not an actual like good player no he was um, he's not the biggest guy and he played catcher he is a tiny is tough. Dude. Yeah, it's tough but I mean he had all the balls he was the Eddie Goodell of yes. your school <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> Are these the closing remarks? I don't uh, have anything substantial to say, but thanks for coming out, guys. Yeah, we can play y'all out. You gonna play us a song to, to play uh, us out to sure. leave after uh, Matt Brunick mean? signs us off? Yeah, or as Matt Brunick signs us off. All right, let's go. <laughs> Today. And so I canceled all my plans. I'm gonna find a new solution right away. And when I'm down, head on the water to ease my woes. I sing out my sins with the ones I love. You can find me at the soul shop Where my daddy told me how to ride And my mama played the 88 top I sing home